Welcome to another episode of the Spidey Dude Experience. I'm Zach Joyner, your friendly neighborhood webmaster and host of the program. If you're watching us live on YouTube, welcome. If you're watching us on Facebook, welcome. If you're watching us on the Comic Binge YouTube channel, welcome as well. Tonight, we're going to be covering uh, issues 19 and 20 of The Amazing Spider-Man. Or if you're using fantasy numbering, the number is 913 and 914. But we're also going to be covering Marvel Legends. They had a massive fan stream today. We're going to be talking about that first. But before we get started, we got to thank our patrons at patreon.com slash Network. We gotta thank our uh, friends such as Vinkman, Scott, Greg, Kigar, Master Dramon, Venetian, Kale, Georgia, Jessica, Vicky, Catherine, Cindy, uh, Mr. Farquhar, Laura, Ed Reynolds, and our three newest ones. Vicky's are one of the three, the four newest ones, but Scott McCure, Vanessa Emo, and Janelle Turner, they all have contributed to patreon.com slash the Spidey Network. We really appreciate your support. And if you want to check out our other fine shows here on the program, you certainly can do that as well. We'll first talk about Clone Saga Chronicles, a show all about the Clone Saga and the Clone Saga related characters. Sorry, I'm trying to get my notes on. Oh, live television. All right. Uh, it's the show that started it all here on the, on the Spidey Dude Radio Network. Then we got Spectacular Radio, the show all about the Spectacular Spider-Man animated series. It ran from 2008 to 2009 on Kids WB and Disney XD, with frequent guests being executive producer Greg Wiseman that covered every episode of the series. Amazing Spider-Man classics. The season, first season was three guys talking about Spidey from the beginning, with season two being a father-son duo. Jack and Javi Trujillo are doing it themselves. And the Spectacular Spidey... Sal Buscema Era podcast is hosted by Chris Drimmond. Talks about the era of Spectacular Spider-Man comic. Written by our pal Sal, or excuse me, drawn by our pal Sal Buscema. Voices from the Eerie a Gargoyles podcast is hosted by Greg Bashansky, Jennifer L. Anderson, and covers the Gargoyles animated series with co-creator of the series, Greg Wiseman. Books of X is a Patreon first show hosted by Neil Bogenreiter. Talks about the Cocoan era of X-Men from the beginning. And finally, our sister podcast is hosted by myself and Kelly McDaniel. I don't have the overlay up right now, but it's uh, Make Mine Mayday, the show all about Spider-Girl and her world. You can find uh, that show on here and all the rest of the shows over on spidey-dude.com. The links are down in the description below. And bef- and uh, with that, I turn it over to the fact that I've got my good friend, Greg Bashansky here tonight, the host of Books or Voices from the Eerie. I'm almost in Books of X. So welcome to the show. <laughs> Uh, but- Kang, we had a deal. <laughs> yes, Kang, we had a deal. Uh, if you want to hear me talk a lot about Kang the Conqueror and the uh, uh, that movie, you can find us over if you if you're not already subscribed over to the Comic Binge YouTube channel. Me and Paul and everybody talked about it on uh, not this week's episode of the Comic Binge, but last week's episode of the Comic Binge. Uh, Adam and Paul will be on later because we're going to be talking a lot about Marvel Legends here in this beginning parts of the podcast. So, uh, hello, Greg. Uh, had a you've had a successful. Um, it's been a long time since you've been on the show. So, uh, tell everybody about Voices from the Year. Kind of plug it and tell tell everybody what's going on. Well, we're currently on a uh, we're we're down to doing one show a month, only temporarily, and. Uh, for reasons I cannot disclose yet, but as soon as we're able to, we're going to be back to doing two shows a month, and I promise you it's a very good reason, and when that becomes public, it should be really cool. But we've uh, just finished City of Stone, we're about to jump into the first episode of the next year after that high noon, and we have an interview on there with uh, Sally Richardson, who was the voice of Detective Elisa Maza, so it was really nice to get her, we were never able to get her to any of the conventions back in the day, so... But it's but it was a terrific interview. She's a terrific human being, and um, we're also Dynamite is sending us freebies. We're getting free advanced looks at the comics so that we can record our first impressions and make sure we strike by the lightning. It's hot, so we usually have it, them up two days after the comic comes out. That's pretty impressive. So, um, speaking of announcements. Uh, I do want to talk about it with Greg on here, but uh, we had our first episode on Patreon that was video for Voices from the Eerie. So if you want to get the video version, 
go over to uh to patreon.com slash fighting network right greg mm-hmm. and you can see a few of us have faces for radio <laughs> we, knew you did. We, we know we know that the prettiest one of the group is jennifer so <laughs> no arguments uh, but uh, not only that, we got uh, we've recorded the first episode of Books of X with Neil and myself. We've covered the first episode. We're going to cover this. We're going to record the second episode very soon. I think on s- this weekend. So we've got um, we're building the backlog for Books of X. Uh, that is coming. So it's no longer just us talking about it being pie in the sky. And we were literally just talking about it on air. We've got the uh, there's a there's some um, uh, commentaries that we're trying to get together. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Also, Hobby will. Sh- possibly be on this episode too, to talk about um, the newest uh, issues of asm so um which i did not have time to read (laughs) that's okay so i mean you can you can still hang out um all right so let's pivot uh we got uh venkman in the comments saying hello there looking forward to books of x and he says greg venkman (laughs) so um yeah, he is a Patreon subscriber. He's been our oldest Patreon subscriber, and uh, we we do thank Venkman for his his support of all the shows here on the Spidey Dude Radio Network. Be like uh, Venkman. Be like Venkman. Support the show. Be like Venkman. Um, so, all right. Speaking of the passion of mine and Greg's, you can see all the legends behind him. He has a much better uh, view of his of his legends shelf than I do. Um, but. Today there was a I, massive. I had, get, I had to get Galactus in there. Well, I mean, yeah, you got you got Galactus and the Sentinel in there. You got them both. Um, supremely jealous, my friend. But uh, yes, uh, the Devourer of Worlds, because there is a reference to Haslab that we'll, that we're going to probably debate and discuss. Because there's pretty much two lines of thinking. I think a lot of people are thinking on it. So uh, we'll get everybody's thoughts on the comment section below. All right, so let's. Uh, uh, also, the pinned comment will be the um, the timestamps. I'm trying to get the timestamps in the in the pinned comments. So, uh, if you haven't joined our Discord, you haven't. Uh, there's a bunch of links in the description, so check all those out. Um, I, I spent a lot of time working on that, so hopefully, it'll give you guys easy access to all of our respective stuff. So, all right, let's do the let's talk about the reveals. Um, so they kind of, this reveal has already been out. The pre-orders are already out. They're going to start shipping, I think very soon, but they kind of gave us a first look in hand at the VHS Marvel legends with carnage and, uh, the black suit Spidey. That's got some, um, cell shading. They, uh, apparently they said that they, they feel like this is the best cell shading they've done. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes in hand. Um, if you have not already picked that up, it is available over on the pulse. Uh, I will include the links after the show. Um, I will have the links down in the description. I have the link to the live stream in the description. So if you have not watched it, I highly encourage you to do so because we're going to kind of breeze through these pretty quickly. Um, so there's another view of it. If you're watching, if you're listening to us on the audio edition, again, uh, pay it no mind. We're going to have a lot of visual aids in this particular episode. Uh, Greg, what do you think of these two? Are you going to pick them up, or are you going to uh, pass on them? I'm probably not going to pick them up. I've got a symbiote Spidey, and I've got a Carnage, and I prefer. They look good for what they're trying to do, though, for the most part. I think they have gotten better with the cell shading. They're not great at it. I mean, if you look at, say, NECA, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, those know how to do cell shading a lot better than Hasbro has. But Hasbro's getting there. They're getting better with each release, so hopefully yeah, they'll eventually I- nail it. I have the um, the Cyclops that they did um, that's based on the Jim Lee design. And I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, It's one of their best ones they they did. So I'm I'm curious to see um, uh, how this one looks. So uh, next up, we're going to talk about, uh, well, the action figure that's going to get the most action out of any of these figures that we're going to talk about today, it's going to be Aunt May. Um, <laughs> so they announced their next uh, VHS-based uh, box release. These are going to be available on Pulse. As of this recording, it's the, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern for Pulse subscribers, 2 p.m. Eastern for um, uh, the rest of the general public. 
but it's also got Dr. Otto Octavius, and I like that shot because it's got the cell shaded Spidey that nobody can find except in Canada. Uh, but this one is notable because it's not only the design of the 90s show, but it's also got Bendy Tentacles. Uh, which to, to me that that just warrants a it just does it, it warrants that type of reaction because i was very excited about it um so these are also going to be backwards compatible uh Greg, are you going to pick this one up yes i am for a couple of reasons i mean i'm probably not going to display that arc figure it looks great though for those who love that design and those who want it i'm glad you're getting it but i'm going to put those arms on my more classic style lock what i really want is a white business suit armani suit doc yeah. doc. and that yeah and that's yeah this and is that's like my, May. go on this is my second like favorite of the 90s other than the, and the uh, other than the white suit but yeah go on what were you saying and that's for Aunt May. Well, you know me. I'm all about figures with civilian characters. I don't think it looks particularly good. I guess it looks okay for what they're trying to do. Mm, maybe not. But um, I hope they have an alternate head with that because she needs an alternate head. At the same time, though, I am not convinced we'll ever get another Aunt May figure based on, or one based on the comic. So by default, I need a representative of that character up there. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of the same thing. Um so here's another image of the of what the back looks like. Um, again, looks really really great. This is straight up the '90s design. Um, they did a really good job of, of translating that. They did. Uh, when they when they actually just make the commitment to do the '90s show stuff, it's really really good. Um, I I think <laughs> Ox chest piece could use a little bit more pain to it because there's something about it that is not quite popping. Do you know what I'm talking about? It looks a little bit more flat look, than it should yeah so i think personally what i would well i'll probably do i already, i need to get the pin for um for shocker and fill in his his uh his little um, mattress x's or whatever i think i may do a similar thing for for this because i am i yeah. this one i'm definitely getting uh i i'm still on the fence about about the, the carnage one um but I don't have the the symbiote Spidey yet, so it's like it was one of those things. I'm kind of I'm kind of like up in the air on it. I, and I like you, I, I I feel like I already have a great Carnage figure, which I have it like right here. I'll move Otto for a second. I have I have this one, and this one's it's essentially this figure, but slightly repainted. And I just don't feel like that. I, uh, yeah, I've got that too. I mean, you probably can't see it from there, but it's uh hanging. It's on the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, all right, so then we get into the new wave. Now, this has been rumored for a while. Rectangular did a video, I think, late last year um, on YouTube. So, yes, yes, Parker, or Matt Bird, we are reviewing it. So this is uh, this is about both. We're doing the we're doing the news with Greg, and then we're going to do the reviews when everybody else gets here. So, just so everybody knows, um, that's why in the description I said news covered in this episode and issues covered in this episode. So, I, I'm trying to keep more organized, folks. It may not be working out for me, but <laughs> all right. So this is a wave. We don't two couple of things. One, the auto and may is available for pre-order tomorrow. The rest of these, we don't have the, we have the, the, uh, the glam shot, obviously of, of auto because it's being released tomorrow, but we don't have any of the glam shots. These are just me pulling from the live stream. Uh, images so again go check out the live stream if you haven't already because they'll talk about this more in detail but we'll start with uh the patrick gleason inspired ben riley from beyond greg what do you think about this one i think it looks great it that head I don't sculpt, think i'm buying it but it looks great <laughs> <laughs> that head sculpt looks good so uh one thing i always am going to note this if it's true or if it is reality or what whatnot this one is very much in the similar design, looks like of the Amazing Fantasy 15. So if you like the articulation of that figure, he's got pinless joints um, on his arms and his legs. All, also, the new head sculpt uh, with the toe articulation. So that is notable as well. It's got toe articulation, which I know is like a big deal for everybody. So um, next up, we'll, we'll talk about, uh, if we're talking about Spidey, then we'll talk about Chasm. 
which notably doesn't have pinless arms and legs. <laughs> Greg, what do you think about this? Maybe, some, maybe someone there suddenly saying something about the concept of chasm. I mean, if you're going to make a chasm figure, I'm, I'm, it looks good, but I cannot separate my dislike of chasm as a concept from this figure. So whether or not I get it or not depends entirely on what the build a figure is. Yeah, that that to me is very that's a big, big question, because if it's going to be a good build a figure, then you, you know, you're kind of like you're feeling like you're forced to. Um, uh, to get it, you know what I mean? So th that's a very big question. I don't know what the build a figure is going to be. Um, it's a well done looking figure of something I don't like. Yeah, no, look, I, I'm of the same same belief. I think they're using so the this one, I think, is the Vulcan body sculpt. Um, does not have toe articulation on this one, so so he's a little bit more bulkier than um, than than the other Ben Riley. Um, so yeah, and then we'll talk some classic. Um, Please, talk, let's talk a classic yes. figure <laughs> in the rose, and I'm gonna be pulling up the image of the other classic figure that I somehow did not get. So keep, keep talking, Greg. Tell us a, bit, a little bit about the Rose and what uh, what they got going on. Well, he's yeah. a, as you all know, he's the son of uh, Wilson Fisk, Richard Fisk. Although, if if uh, Tom DeFalco had his way, he would have been Roderick Kingsley, and the Hobgoblin would have been Richard Fisk. So it's uh, interesting history here, interesting behind the scenes. But it looks terrific. I'm really happy to get it. I'm actually wondering, looking at that, if that might eventually be a base body for that Ock figure that I just said that I wanted because but no it looks fantastic that, that's a good that's a good point that's a very good point uh I am I'm of the belief that like that these you know these all are just they look great like this one in particular looks great I, I, they have tarantula I'm, I'm trying to get my image of tarantula up so give me just a second while we're doing that but no I, I while I'm doing that Rose looks phenomenal. Uh, this is also all new sculpt. Um, it's pinless legs and arms. It's a brand new. So this is going to be one of the new suit bodies that they're going to be kind of utilizing, I think, moving forward. Uh, any like more of these types of things, I am I am really really looking forward to. Um, and then we'll you know kind of jump from there um, while I'm trying to find my damn image of Tarantula because I thought I uploaded it. Uh, let's talk about the this Jessica Drew. What do you think about this one? I, this one shocked me about how much I liked it. We were talking about this before the show. It looks better to figure than it did in the actual comic book. <laughs> and that's like for me, that's like the second time I've seen that where it's like, man, I like I like the figure now. I think the head sculpt is reuse, but the it legs, is. the legs and the arms and the body are new. So this may be another base body that female base body that we're going to use besides shriek which is really i think now we're starting to develop a bench for the base the female base bodies and i'm here for it it's like we already have silk which is more the teenager young young adult type you know this one's more of the uh, you know adult female type so I, I'm, I'm down for it um you know all right greg now we're going to get into the avengers ones while i'm looking for the tarantula one because i did do a lot of avengers reveals as well what do you think about this uh Bruce Banner and Classic Hulk. He comes with his glasses, but I, I, I got the image without the glasses. The glasses are removable. It's fantastic. I love it. I'm probably yeah. not going to display that Hulk because I've got the green Hulk that I prefer, but I do want that banner. That banner is really nice. Like like that, that again, a little bit of reuse because they got the, 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 the suit, but I, I, I the subtlety thing, and this I was watching Robo on uh, the Floosh today talking about this i love the fact that they have the same colored shirt and same colored pants from banner to hulk so like i the, noticed that too that the continuity between the two is really really nice i really really like it and, and look i like the fact that the glasses look good because the, the <laughs> there was a lot of criticism about the peter parker glasses that they did on that uh first wave of the retro cards mm -hmm. um and but this one looks a lot better. So uh, kudos to kudos to, to to Hasbro for listening to their yeah 
Bailey, yeah, I bet you he'll love to have that banner. I'm going to have to point that out to him see if, see if he's going to be interested. Um, let's jump over to that one. All right, it's Hawkeye with his uh, Sky Cycle or whatever they call it. Uh, this is a purchase for you, isn't it? Okay, go. Yes, it is. Points we get <laughs> that reference. That's from the video game, correct? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. That's definitely a purchase. I love it. It's the best looking classic Hawkeye I've seen yet. And I I'm already looking at my Avengers shelf and thinking this thing is crowded as hell, but I I'll make it work. I'll make it work. <laughs> You're gonna have to buy another shelf there, Greg. Like <laughs> I'm Either that or you fast run, you're gonna, I'm guys. fast I'm fast running out of shelf space, but it forces you to get creative. Right, right. Because like Greg's gonna have we're gonna have to do like a whole like he's gonna have to film his his display and we're gonna have to put it on the YouTube page for people to understand and appreciate how much there is. <laughs> like it's impressive to me how um all right, so man, I was I should I should have done video clips of it, but uh oh hi <laughs> Kelly's like I randomly decided to check in here. We are covering uh, the Marvel Legends reveals. Uh your favorite character Jism is here. Uh oh there's Adam. Hello Adam. Hello. Hey Adam. Hey Greg. Um, let me um let me find Marvel Legends. Uh All right, so we're talking a little bit Marvel Legends. Did you see the uh, see the new figures, my friend? Yeah, I did. What what would you think? Uh, they're pretty cool. Um, the new Ben suit looks good. Um, I actually think I mean the rose is fine. I feel like they should have tailored his jacket a little, you know, tighter. Um, Brian, he's coming. Follows on his way. So. The uh, the Doc Ock and Aunt May pack is cool. <laughs> um, yeah are are you um, are you gonna purchase any of them? Or are they are they ones that you're looking forward to purchasing? Not necessarily. If I had to buy any, it would probably be. It would maybe. I mean, I maybe the two pack. Maybe the Ben, because I do, I do like that new uh, Beyond suit. The Beyond suit looks, but, good. yeah, looks good. Good. Having to go on Discord. Is, so if you have not joined our Discord, by the way, the Discord link is down in the description below. We do discuss this these things as they happen, pretty much live. So if you have, if you want to get like my live thoughts, you can definitely go there uh, and find out what I think. Um, they did. We got. Oh, looky here! We got. Hey, uh, hey, hey. My man. what's up, fellas? He is the host um, of Amazing Spider-Man Classics with his son Jack here on the Spidey Dude Radio Network. Hello, Javi. Welcome back to the show. Walloping well, web snappers. It's been a minute. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Kelly, there will be plenty of people that put that thing on eBay because they're just buying it for the uh, for the uh, Doc Ock tentacles. <laughs> So it, it will be there. I know. I, it's. <laughs> I know. Javi's in the house. Earlier she goes, um, uh, I like to randomly decide to check in and hear a Greg, and then, and then you get Javi. <laughs> and then Bigman's yelling, screaming that I said the name. Um, <laughs> yeah, I said the name. It, it it is it is what it is because it's a, it's a, it's a running meme at this point. Um, one thing I and showing off the Galactus again. Yeah, yeah. Keep 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 uh, keep, keep showing that Galactus off, buddy. Because like we're, we're not we're not extremely jealous of that particular fact. You have that figure. Uh, I, I I am the jealous one. I, I gave you a Galactus. <laughs> Just like I that. do have a. I do have a Galactus. It is in my display. Uh, if you, you know, if you if you like Galactus, uh, I and I really do. I like that old that old build a figure is actually not bad. Uh, 
All right. Yeah, I've now, got him out in the garage. He's pretty decent. The new one, though. That's, that's good. All right. So here is the um, tarantula that I was trying to pull up. Um, Greg, what do you think about this one, guys? What do you think about that one? I, I love this one. This one looks good, except for that I'm a little torn on the blue. First off. Same. He's never been yeah. a favorite of mine, but he's a classic. I will get him, but that blue just looks soft to me. But I, I, I am down for that. I'm wondering how badly those foot spikes are going to warp. Mm. Oh, windowless packaging? Oh. Yeah. Give me a black tarantula. But I mean, yeah. the, otherwise, the figure I think looks great. I like the head yeah. sculpt a lot and how they did the bandana. Like the sculpting of it. Yeah. Um, they also do a um, first. I feel probably all that. I apologize. That was loud in my ears. Um, they did do a first appearance. Man, they have not done since Toy Biz, uh, which looks really, really good. That is dope. It yeah, looks mm-hmm. really good, actually on that thing they were just moving it around looked phenomenal and i went dude i i don't need it but it looks for those that are needing it and for their for their halls of armor like that one is good that is so good uh the paint I, I, is fantastic yeah now here's another controversial one um i saw some people kind of dogging it in the comments um which not entirely sure how I feel about it because um, I'm saving two more and then we'll, and then we'll move on. Um, but I, there's a point that I want to point I want to make on a couple of these. Um, number one, I this uh, this Thor kind of was a little controversial, and I if you want bearded Thor, he looks good. I just mm-hmm. like. I, some people don't like the, the the sides, but I'm like that was what bearded Thor looked like. So. Yep. Now this one, Kelly. Go read. This, go ahead. I was gonna say go read the Simonson run. That's what it looked like. Yep. Uh, so this one, because we had a, a, a very brisk discussion about it, is something that gives me a lot of hope. This is the new, uh, heavily articulated female figure. They're starting with Black Widow. She's going to be super articulate. Super articulated. She's gonna have butterfly joints. She's got pinless joints. This is a brand new sculpt, and I think a brand new style. Um, obviously, to celebrate the 60th anniversary of Avengers, that's why all these Avengers um, are being released. This is the figure that gives me so much hope for a good Spider Girl figure, and I'm fingers crossed because, like, that's what we need. What do you guys think about that? I love it. I love it. This one is so. I've been asking if if you're going to get it. So for me, I'm probably going to get the the, the Spidey Wave, even though it's got chasm slash chism. Um, this is one of the Avengers that I do want to get. They did do a two pack for if you're Monica Rambeau fans out there um, with uh, Monica Rambeau fans. All right. So it's got Monica Rambeau and the Doctor Doom from the Secret Wars action figure line, or is that from the comic? I can't remember if that's from the comic. From the oh, action figure oh. line. Yeah, they drew, they drew that into the comic. The design was based on the toy. Yeah, the, the actual it. 80s figure's chest was a little more detailed and ornate with the paint job. Yeah, but, And I, I still have them, and my guy's paint faded or got scratched off so long ago. But just seeing that again got me really excited for that figure. Also, they uh, did do the destroyer that's coming with the Thor. So if you, and, and this thing's mass, those things are massive. Those are like nine inches in scale and like six, seven inches in scale for Thor. So when you put him next to a six inch figure, he's he's very towering and imposing. Uh, there was a couple other ones. They did the uh, ma- the um, what's the they did the scrolls. Two scroll figures. Uh, a, a super scroll and Queen Varenke. So Kelly says, Zach, unless Mayday a Spider Girl is going to be in a Spider Verse film, we're never going to get a new Spider Girl figure. I'll say, I'll, look, I, they've they've 
almost. I disagree. I disagree that they won't ever happen. But I think they it. Know those snow one. The, I, listen, I think I think they'll do an updated one because they released it. I just don't. I don't know if it's going to be anytime soon. I was kind of hoping that maybe this year would we might see it. But I if if she's going to be in the movie, this is my prediction. If she's going to be in the movie, I think we'll see a comics version of Spider Girl, hopefully. Um, and Vinkman's right. The Thor also wore that outfit in the Falco Friends run too. So hey, hey, Shy Town Spidey, welcome to the show. Uh, I'll be the first like at oh oh look at Brian. He said he'll be the first like to like this video as everyone else should. So. I don't know about the NFT sales. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're not wrong, Kelly. Kelly trying to speak truth to me. Uh, but yeah, so um, guys, what ones are you uh, just to kind of wrap this up and we'll kind of move on. Which ones are you looking forward to? Are there ones that I didn't show that you were looking forward to? Um, Super Adaptoid. Oh. Super Adaptoid and Bucky Cap. I forgot Bucky Cap. Which Greg and I were talking was ironic that they did Bucky Cap or announced Bucky Cap because it's now on the new standard body when Bucky Cap used to be the standard body. So you, you didn't show the new miles. Oh, I didn't show the new miles. I, I have them in the in the brand, but I didn't show them. Okay, so the one that I'm probably least excited about, truthfully, in terms of design, is the new miles. Uh, it's based off of the redesign that they did in the back half of uh, the Ahmed run. Um, not terribly looking forward to it, although you might be wondering about the articulation on the on the sweatshirt. He is articulated. It's just kind of somewhat hindered by the oversized sweatshirt. So uh, for those that like that particular style of Miles, it's there. So, uh, me, I am not one of them. <laughs> the, um, the Amazing Spider-Man suit from the first movie I loathed when that thing came out and the PS4 advanced suit. I also loathed when we first saw images of this miles Morales suit. There's no way I'm ever going to love that thing. It is <laughs> awful. Ruthless. <laughs> like I came around on those other two suits, but I don't see a time. Maybe when I'm like 80 and senile. Maybe it would look I, better if you didn't have the sweater. Maybe yeah, it better. I really, I really God. hate that, is, that sweater too. Like, why does the, he have a turtleneck over his mask? Like it, it makes it, no sense. It makes no sense. It was, it was too hard to be. Cool. Bazooka no. Joe, and if you get that reference, you're uh, you've watched too much Seinfeld. Uh, Kelly says he is a little kid. He'll never not be under the current Marvel editorial. That's not. I mean, he's gotten older. Yeah, he's he's, not, he's he's gotten you know taller and and bigger and he's what? But, uh, so, so it's Billy Connors. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I doubt we'd ever see him beyond college. Oh yeah, no, never. Like, I don't think that's ever going to happen. So um, this is the classic '90s Avengers uh, Black Black Knight, and who is the, Cersei? Is that the character's Cersei, name? Cersei, yes. So these are two that I know, Greg. You're getting right. Yeah, yes, I am. So uh, I did not want. I wanted a Cersei figure. I did not want the Eternals movie figure of her, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody did. Those things are still tag one right now. Um, no, you can't get those. And I knew that was going to happen. Whenever those got leaked, I was like, "Man, that's that. Those are not going to sell." Uh, and then th there's the Bucky cap that I mentioned. Um, really looks good. This one looks straight up like uh, Alex Ross brought to life. They did a really good job yeah. on this one. For those that did not get the original Bucky cap, have at it. For those of us that are trying to sell the original Bucky cap, well, are probably aren't going to get much more than retail. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. You didn't show Varanki. You didn't show the uh, Super Adaptoid. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let me find Varanki. Oh yeah, yeah. Ranky the the scroll, that's the the scroll queen, which I hope you can put that head on the mockingbird figure that came out a few years ago. And if you get that reference, you are awesome. I yes, I understood that reference. All right, so there's there's a super adaptoid, and then we'll talk about the Hazlab, and then we'll move on. Um, I, 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 people are happy to get their 92 representation. Let's get some Earth's Mightiest Heroes representation also. 
<sighs> you ain't wrong, brother. You ain't wrong. All right, let's see that one. I, I just uploaded. I'm going to be deleting a lot of these overlays here. All right. There's a super yeah. adapt with with um, this one is yeah with Renke. This is a 12 inch figure in a six inch line, so it's a it's a big chunky boy, um, partially based off of the 12 inch Captain America body, which I know some people kind of griped about, but I'm like, it makes sense. <laughs> like, is it I a build a figure or is it sold this separate? Is a, this is a deluxe, deluxe figure. figure, so it's going to okay. be a ultra deluxe figure that's going to be well they did a lot of these were two packs like thor and uh, scroll queen they were all two packs um this one's kind of their big deluxe figure and then they also have the uh what's this one called greg i, I can't remember super, another super scroll a another version of the super scroll with more avengers instead of fantastic um, this is apparently not all the parts and pieces to him. There's a more that comes to with him. I'm hoping there's a head swap on the, uh, on the Je Jessica drew. Cause that's also. Oh, just, for, yeah. yeah. Oh, I had her and then I sold her like a dumbass. So yeah. Um, I re there's, there's certain ones I regret selling and that was one of them. my rhino is the other one. Um, okay. So going back to the final bit on this one to wrap this up, they had the, they have the tease that the HasLab for this year is going to be uh, Avengers themed. I think some people think it's a Quinjet, right, Greg? They do. I don't. And let me tell you why I don't. I did get the HasLab Sky Striker for G.I. Joe. That's the 118 scale thing. The thing is huge. It's about 27 inches long. If you were to do that for a six inch scale figure, never mind to get multiple figures in there. It would be gigantic. So I think, speaking of gigantic, you like what I did there? Uh, my theory is, is that it's, uh, it's that's Giant Man. Uh, there's, I think so too. And, and my reasoning is more, I look at the Toy Biz Build-A-Figures, and I, if you look at the Toy Biz Build-A-Figures, they've either made Deluxes or they've made Haslabs out of them. Almost all of them now have been made, except for Giant Man. And in my opinion, you can do Hank, you can do First Appearance Wasp, you can do Yellow Jacket, which desperately needs a revamp. Um, you could do, you know, Goliath. There, there's all sorts of things you can do that you couldn't probably do any other time. You know what I mean? So, like, this one's like. This is the last of the Has Hasbro build toy biz builder figures that have not been made. I know there's a lot of people that are big fans of the of the one that from Toy Biz, but there's also a lot of people that can't get that. So I'm really thinking it's going to be um, Giant Man. I'll be very surprised if it's not. I have to find a way to fit it in there. I mean, I've got a Giant Man in there, not that one. So in this case, it would depend upon the price. It would depend upon what it comes with. All right. So, um, let me check the poll. See if he's coming around. So, we're going to move on. Noting the timestamp in, it'll be in the pin comment down below. Okay. So, obviously, the big thing we're going to be talking about tonight, besides Marvel Legends, was going to be Amazing Spider Man 19 and 20. Now, Greg has not read these yet, correct? Correct. All right. So, Adam and Neil, or Adam and Neil. <laughs> Adam and Javi. Uh, so you saying Adam and Neil. Sorry, Javi. Uh, Before uh, I go anywhere, will I miss a spirited and passionate argument? Oh, <sighs> I don't know. I'm very, because like, uh, this is going to be an interesting discussion because I, I, I am not of the same length as Twitter. I, I think the discourse is going to be oh, those very well much more subdued I'm saying, than I'm saying <laughs> what we've seen online. I I am Greg, not that. Greg Greg said like, I, about it. Oh boy. Yeah, me either. Really. <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't read the issue, but I have things to say about that controversy, that stupid controversy, which tells you what I think of it already. So, 
Wh- which one? Because there's multiple stupid controversies when it involves these two issues. Um, is it the sister is. one? Like a sister? I mean, that's the big one. Yeah, well, that's... I mean, I thought... It's okay. That's the second one. The first one was the recap page of the first issue. Oh, oh yeah. that uh, whatever. I didn't, remember, I didn't hear that one. Okay, so I'm gonna do a rundown really quickly of the these issues, right quick because um, I know our comment section is gonna disagree with some of the things I have to say. All right, so it, it uh, issue 19. Joe Kelly is the guest writer. Our guest penciler and colorist is Terry Dotson. The guest anchor is Rachel Dotson. Um, John Romina Jr. did the cover art. Nick Lowe is the editor. Um, C.B. is the editor-in-chief. So we get a previously page that says Peter's life was back on track until his clone, Chasm, came around to take a shot at him. Now that Spidey has unwoven Chasm's dark web, he can go get back to his normal life. You know, normal, like when your long-term girlfriend is mysteriously married with kids or working with your former arch enemy who just tortured you and killed you, killed those you loved for years are dating the world's greatest cat burglar, a normal life back on track. Note, this events to, of this issue take place after the Mary Jane and Black Cat miniseries that started during Dark Web. So, well, when they put it like that. <laughs> um, Kelly, if you want to join, I can send you the link. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> okay, so our issue opens with, with Black Cat and Peter um, kind of fighting a bunch of goons. You know, Black Cat and Peter are going, you know, they've made a decision. They're going to go on a weekend trip. So <laughs> Peter lets Black Cat drive a convertible in the middle of winter because it's Cat and she wants to do that. Uh, he talked to Aunt May. Aunt May was like, uh, just don't forget to wear a raincoat. So there's there's your sexual innuendo that Joe Kelly loves to put in every time he writes. He writes Black Cat. Black Cat at one point decides to stand up and Peter has to take the wheel. <laughs> so then when they get to the... So this spa upstate, guess who's there? It's Mary Jane and Paul. Not to be confused with our Paul, but Mary Jane's Paul, whatever. Um, so there's a bunch of awkwardness be- going back and forth. And at one point, like there's stupid things like Peter wearing your kitty kitty sh- boxer shorts. Uh, Peter and Cat kind of get away, you know, dip out. All of a sudden, they bump into these v- super villains that are, you know, suddenly fighting. It's, it's White Rabbit. Turns out White Rabbit uh, has been starting this whole supervillain for hire type thing where basically you get to cosplay and interact with supervillains because they stole a bunch of supervillain tech and that's what they're using to do these things. Uh, one of the supervillains gets killed so back and forth. Turns out he's dead. And then the supervillains, not supervillains, are like, oh, we're going we're gonna to start attacking Spidey and Black Cat. So Black Cat uh, was... Yeah, her one of her accomplices is one of the Tombstone's accomplices. So, or not Black Cat. I'm sorry, White Rabbit. Uh, and then go back and forth. So that cuts to the next issue again. I'm 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 recapping these very quickly. I I I, I want everybody to understand. I'm not doing super detailed recaps on these because it doesn't really it isn't really worth it. All right. I mean, it's all you really need to know. You're you're hitting yeah. all the the right notes here. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we get to the uh, next issue, same creative team, same same situation. We open with um, uh, with Peter protecting uh, Tombstone's goon. Meanwhile, you know the he, he's got a name. What's his name? I can't remember his name. Kareem. Kareem. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank God. Kareem. So <laughs> he's got Kareem. I was, tempted, I was tempted to say Hammerhead, but wrong podcast. <laughs> I understood. Hang on. Uh, I mean, he's practically a character now. This is his fourth like, appearance, fifth appearance. I, I lost count. That's how many. This is issue 20, and he's been in like a quarter of the issues. Yeah, he was in the first arc pretty. He was in almost all the issues of the first arc, I think. So, yeah, and he was in the, um, I think it was the Vulture issues too. But uh, did that reference. there you go, Greg. That was a little delayed. But anyway, um, so we got the not Sinister Six trying to attack, you know. We got Kareem and, and Peter together. We got MJ or MJ <laughs> Black Cat and White Rabbit together. And so that's kind of where the two groups are separated, you know, um, out. At one point, apparently Kareem uh, wets his pants and we find out that Iron Man wears depends underneath his armor because we need to know that. So he has to say a bunch of fight fighting goes on. 
eventually, um, like White Rabbit's like, you know, Spider-Man's too good for you. <laughs> kind of commentating on their relationship. And eventually we find out that the guy that was cosplaying as Mysterio faked his own death. It turns out he wasn't dead after all. Quickly gets defeated. They all get webbed up. Uh, White Rabbit leaves. Cream leaves. And and Cream's kind of pissed off at White Rabbit because White Rabbit's like harebrained schemes of getting him in trouble. And he has a wife and kids. So like he's like, please don't put me in these stupid situations ever again. So they keep going back and forth. White Rabbit, you know, basically just acts like Kareem's a disposable person. And then we get the big scene of the issue where it's Peter Parker um, and it, and Black Cat having a heart to heart. Basically what it, what is going on is, is that, you know, Peter is not wanting to admit that his feel, he still has feelings for MJ, even though he's dating Black Cat. Black Cat wants him to at least acknowledge that he has these feelings. And so he makes this ridiculous ridiculously clumsily awkward type of thing. So he says, quote, Mary Jane has been a part of my life for a long time, more than a part, but she's more like a sister. And as soon as he says this, black cat's like, Nope. Nope. Friend. Rightfully. That was, so, yes. That was out, of context, to do that. out of yeah. context, out of context, out of context. She was calling his BS. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. She, she's calling his BS. And then he goes, well, a best friend. She goes, that's better. And that yeah. he loves her, he always has, and, he, and a part of him always will. He wonders if the love has changed, like going from a capital L to a lowercase L or the other way around, whichever makes sense. So basically, this scene, as clumsily as it's written, is an attempt by Peter to, to rectify his feelings for MJ to Cat. And Cat, rightfully so, calling him out on his awkward bullshit. Okay, it's not that he's saying that he loves MJ like a sister. OK, what he's trying to say is, is he's trying to say something that will make Black Cat not upset with him that he still loves MJ. The whole point of the scene is to specifically convey that he still loves MJ. And he's trying to figure out and quote unquote move forward. We don't know what the hell happened. We're going to find that out in the next arc. But this whole no, if we're lucky, me, if we're lucky. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, we we'll find something out. Yeah. yeah. Some sort of answers are going to be made, but whether or not we <laughs> like the answers, that remains to be seen. But like the whole thing of, of this this panel, um, Kelly, um, Kelly has a point, and I'm I'm sending her the link. Joe Kelly or or Kelly McDaniel. Kelly McDaniel has a okay. has a a point that she made to me, and when she made it to me, I was significantly less. Um, I, look, I was mildly irritated by it. Um, I look, try to, I know. I look, look. I get it. You are a MJ Stan. Let's be real. Yeah. So am uh, I. I love MJ, but at the same time, and and I'm irritated as hell because everything prior to this, even during beyond shit was like building toward these two characters. Their, their love was building stronger. And then we suddenly have this nothing burger six month time jump. I understand Kelly. I put the, uh, I put the stream yard link in the, in the group chat. So if you want to jump on, um, so my point of this being, I understand a little bit of the controversy because out of context, if you just, just put this panel in there. It's weird. Why would it, why would Peter say it like that? But reading the full bit, it's Peter throughout the entire two parts and really throughout mo ever since him and him and black cat got together, the elephant in the room has been MJ and he keeps running from acknowledging his feelings. He doesn't want to talk about it. This is the first time he's actually opening up to, to Black Cat. So it, it, with everybody that are saying, okay, well, out of everybody that Peter could date, Black Cat is justified and is a justification of somebody that conceivably Peter can date. They have history. It makes sense. Do I love it? Not necessarily, but I think if you're going to have them do this, then you have to acknowledge MJ, especially now that Black Cat knows 
everything. Because I went back and read the Joe Kelly books during Brand New Day. And they're bad. They're really well writ or drawn, but they're bad. And the reason that they're bad is because the characters aren't doing things that make sense. And as much as I don't like the way Peter's behaving here, at least it feels like that in this context, Peter's making more sense than he has in the past with Kelly. So uh, Joe Kelly, not Kelly McDaniel. So it's like the Paul thing all over again. We got to we got to worry about which Paul we're talking about. What do you guys think? I'm going to open it up to to Hobby and uh, and Adam. What do you guys think about this? Because really, there's nothing there's nothing more. Basically, they kiss, they make up, they swing off, and that's the end of the issue. So, uh, Adam, you want to go first? I'll go first, I guess. Um, I'll do some general thoughts. Uh, I didn't really love or hate these issues. I think the, I mean, the plot is fine for what is what it is. I think it my my biggest cons with the writing, they're like they're pros and cons. Uh, Joe Kelly, I'm not necessarily a fan of his humor. However, he's he has, I would argue, he has pretty good timing, like with the sister line. Oh, she's like a sister to me. Black Cat immediately goes, nope, and that's that is good timing like i can see that playing out you know on a tv show or something uh, um I, I agree with that um like that's rom-com line but it it, yeah. it it works as a rom-com yeah and it's just like his his humor it's just it's such a mixed bag for me like some of it is like kind of funny i mean i get it's just not my style like it, it's kind of like cringy and it's a little too seems dated to me like from i don't know it, it seems like just 10 to 15 years ago stuff to me that hasn't aged well it's like a you know like i mean he's a middle-aged man he's doing what a middle-aged man thinks is funny or something i don't know <laughs> it's just not it doesn't totally um gel with me um i like the art for the most part i think the Dodsons are great. However, there are some really, I said this, you know, in our little text thing today, cause Javi brought it up. There are some panels in this, in these two issues that are just really, really rushed looking. And I mean, there's some really good Spidey and black cat stuff. And then there's, there's some stuff that is just like, it's, I, I, I don't want to like, you know, badmouth the artist too much because, like, I'm not an artist, and you know, they've the Dodsons have like you know proven their artistic capabilities over the years. But there's some stuff in here that's really rushed looking, almost like sloppy looking. Not like big, not not some of like key moments, but just like it's it's little stuff. But it's still like ooh, like deadline yeah. crunch or something. I don't know. It's just really. It, it, unfinished I, yeah unfinished like and like just like you look at the lines of some of these things and it's just like it's sketchy as as hell but you know i i i say this with all due respect like you know um and yeah i, I feel like you basically nailed it zach with the sister line like it's just peter clumsily trying to where is that lie that? lie to himself and you know half ass kind of lie to Felicia like not hurt her feelings or whatever because you know he he's doing this re they're they're both doing this like rebound thing and I don't know like should he have not should Kelly have not like maybe written that line at all like I feel like the line is kind of clumsy in itself but as it builds, it's, it, it gets better. Um, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe he should have like, you know, thrown out that, that line, uh, and not done it. But I, I mean, it is what it is. It's, it'll be forgotten about. Well, I hope the internet has a long memory. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so we got, we got some comments, just, but now like all the, all the jokes, like people like posting, 
panels and pages of Peter and Mary Jane being intimate. And it's like, oh, just a guy and his sister. Like, that's just stupid. Like, I don't. <laughs> it's like it's like shut up you know like i don't know it's like go outside i don't know <laughs> it's not it's not that big of a deal well it's it's it's, it's a it's a stupid dumb clumsy line that maybe he shouldn't have put in there but all right i mean you know i digress all right uh hobby while you're doing that up so um i think the biggest problem that this whole volume has had has been one of timing, whether it's, you know, uh, delays or release schedule problems or how the story is structured or things are revealed to us. It's all down to really bad timing. The fact that we're getting this fill in arc taking place after another story that hasn't even been published yet so we have no idea what really goes down with with Black Cat and MJ. And then right. we're getting this story coming at the end of it. It's like, right. it's just one more thing on top of all these other pieces that we don't know happened. Um, so, and I don't know the logistics or the ins and outs of why, you know, because as far as I know, Black Cat and MJ is on time. I don't think mm -hmm. it was delayed or anything. So the fact that there's this scheduling snafu is just, it's baffling to me. And I think at the moment, like one of the things that's hurting the book the most is the fact that just the scheduling and the timing is all off between this and the, um, what was the X-Men deal with the big party, the Hellfire Gala, like all that stuff was just way out of whack and was, and maybe five years down the road when you read it all in the correct order, like it's going to flow a lot better. Um, but I think that's been one of the biggest drawbacks to this run. And, and just to echo what you guys said, it, it, I, I totally, as a Peter and the MJ fan, I mean, I've got a Ron friends commission behind me of Peter and MJ. Like that wasn't cheap to have two people in it. <laughs> so I understand the frustration of, of not having them together. And I get the hullabaloo of how the marriage word to Paul slipped in there, but it's not brought up again in the story. Um, she referred, he gets referred to as her guy, not her husband. So whether that was an oversight or plans changed, they didn't go back and correct the text page. We don't know. We're not privy to the inner workings. Um, <laughs> nice plug. I, I get I get that it that it can sting. Um and it, it but it's not the first time we've been down this road before. And I Black Cat has been doing like so awesome on her own and getting her own agency back and being her own character and not being forced into doing things just because it sounds like a cool concept that I was really content with her off in her McKay verse you know, doing her own thing with her crew. So coming back into Spidey's world as a love interest, I'm not necessarily thrilled about it. What's up, Chris? Um, but, you know, I don't necessarily think that it's being handled poorly because we're getting to see Peter try and figure all this out. And, and like I said, the problem is we don't know what he's trying to figure out with MJ and, um, it's it's just causing more problems at this point. But we have, a, we have a new person here, so I'm going to shut up now. No, Bye. no, no. Keep going. I, mean, no. Uh, I have to go. I'm sorry. My oh, God, no. <laughs> Shit. Uh, no. Um, hi, y'all. Also, hey, long time apologies, no see. apologies for the five-minute makeup. I look way worse than I am. If you're an audio listener, you don't even know but. what we're talking Good. Yes. That's true. Yes. Please, yeah. please. This is this is the time for audio and not the time of I scrambled and then opened up uh I found the HBO House of Dragon red blend at uh Total Wine. So that that's gonna happen <laughs> at some point. Um I, I didn't yeah. put on hey, any I'm makeup here. today. I'm sorry. Same I mean, 
Yeah, it's I, fine. It's fine. Honestly, you look you look great. I'm I'm the one that's aged you. like 20 years thanks to uh, working in the print industry. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, insights I, I, you might have about you know certain books not being published yet. I do slightly, especially because uh, I, I I can't say who our customers are, but. Hi. Uh, yeah, fair. no, um, I, I'm going to put in that I've only read enough just to understand the discourse. And I am just here so we can talk about the discourse later. So y'all finish y'all's review and I will. So, so I'll, I'll input, I'll put input my chaos uh, after. So the last couple of days, like the last couple of weeks, you know, Kelly did a, did a whole bit on, um, Twitter, and then I decided that I would sit there. Okay, wait, 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 wait. It's not a bit. It was. Oh, there was I, a very. I mentioned a very serious situation about feminism in comics. That, that's that's right. okay, yeah. <laughs> and no one seemed to understand the point. <laughs> I know. So then I decided that I would be the guy that's like the the marriage is not a fix all. Bringing the marriage back is not going to fix everything about the about the Spidey books. What happened, Adam. I, 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 okay. This is correct. Well, no, no, no. The, I, I the, have... thing, the thing is, Zach, there has to only be one of us. It's Adam, Kelly, or Javi. It can't be the three of us. Okay. So hopefully Adam comes back on here in a minute. But... Hopefully, yeah. There he it's, is. A, it's a clone situation. It happens. All right. So, um, so I made the mistake. Actually, it wasn't a mistake. I, I, I needed to say it because I decided to do a hot take. And here's the thing. When it comes to hot takes, I understand that there's going to be heat that is generated by the hot take. It's in the title. We learned that. <laughs> hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Can I can I rag Zach a little bit? And I I also do apologize. I'm like I'm using the oldest headset, so I know my audio is not the greatest. But no, you sound good. Thank you. I am on a brand new laptop. Uh, that would explain the video card awesomeness, but. Uh, you were sitting there claiming hot take. Maybe it's just me. Uh, you only had like five posters. Okay, it wasn't as bad as yours. <clears throat> yours was like, holy crap. What, what was the, the thread? I, I totally missed it. <laughs> Which one? Her thread or I, my thread? I, her thread. I want to oh. hear what... Kelly had oh, to say. okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So basically my whole thing was and I had had a former conversation offline about it. Mm -hmm. Certain friends of ours who I love and adore and appreciate their sentiment. But when they speak about Mary Jane, they mm -hmm. tend to talk about her in a very prize to be one trophy wife uh, fetish kind of way. Mm -hmm. And it bothers me. So I just yeah. had mentioned because with the discourse about, about the love you like a sister, which I had been joking about is a line from Taylor Swift because <laughs> it is. Um, I've heard. So again, like, it's true. It is true. So again, the whole thing, though, is like I didn't understand the big issue, but I was seeing all of those same people be so upset over that one line. Yeah. which ultimately was taken completely out of context. And I was just like, well, why is it that our loudest voices for pro MJ also seem to fetishize and take her as a trophy wife? Because the thing about anti MJ people or the people that don't give a crap about it, they tend to feel like she's not a full character and that she is just a quote unquote prize to be won. And the issue at hand and what seemed to enrage some people is that all of a sudden she was no longer Peter's prize, but Paul's prize. And this is the issue that I have is Mary Jane is a, and I hate saying it like the way that it's just the easiest for me to say is Mary Jane is a human being. Mm -hmm. She is a person. She has a full personality. She's, she does not, she is not owned by anybody. That is the opposite of what MJ is, is to be owned. Yeah. Obviously though, she is a fictional character and uh, some people have brought up very great points that, honestly, she has not been a full-fledged out character for a very, very, very long time. Ultimately, since Gwen's death as well, she kind of got fridged a bit like every female character. And that, I mean, that's a bigger conversation. 
but the situation at hand is Mary Jane deserves some respect. And unfortunately, both sides of the conversation seem to forget this. And that's what I was trying to bring up because of what was so funny and what quote unquote brought it, I, I'm not going to say viral. It didn't fully go viral, but the thing that made it very popular over the weekend was the pro MJ fans trying to defend themselves, saying that they're not fetishizing her and giving us reasons why versus the people that are, Zach, can I just like be real on the wording? They're being creepy. Yeah. No, sure. no, 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 not exactly what I was say gonna say. Cause I'm actually talking about the, the anti MJ fans, oh. the fans that are actually okay with Zeb Wells writing. I was gonna say that, you know, they, they seem to be um, clamoring towards um, a certain object of Zeb Wells. Oh. Yeah, speak for you. I don't care. Okay. Uh, you know, the people that are sucking Zeb Wells' dick. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. You know what? Oh. I tried. Look, I asked. I Damn. asked if it was okay. I asked if it was okay. We all know who I'm talking to. Um, those people were also upset that I, they thought I agreed with them <laughs> and then realized, no, 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 no. I am, I am my own third party here i am wielding guns at both of you both sides are literally objectifying women and y'all need to shut the f up that was yeah. my that was my point so so that was kelly's that that's that's kelly's crux of her argument is that i just, was, I, appre I appreciated yeah. both sides were like yeah you're with me and i was like no i'm not <laughs> and here's why it was like i dropped a bomb and walked away and i felt bad and also badass and i kelly I stand, I stand by myself Ke kelly metaphorically <laughs> walked away as everything is blowing up wolverine uh x-men origins wolverine style when after, the, after that helicopter blows up and it's just like she's like doing the slow-mo walk you know slowly metaphorically speaking um i mean personal personally my personal thing is i'm the solo driver in the thelma louise car as i just fly off the cliff <laughs> <laughs> that's fair well all right so that goes that kind of brings that kind of leads me into what my take was was there's this there's this notion i think a little bit about the discourse about this run that if we bring back the marriage it's just gonna fix everything and that's a little short-sighted okay and here's thank why you. thank you no that that was brought up in my conversation was it not yes it was because that's what created the vir the viralness was somebody sent me an anonymous message asking about what would fix what would fix the marriage and I the way that it was written, which was not what was intended. I, I do want to make sure that that's clear that the person that sent the original message did not intend it to be that way because they privately messaged me and cleared things up. But the way that the question was written almost sounded as if they thought, okay, once someone gets married, they are someone's property, which of course they're not. And that's kind of what brought up the question because that's something that Marvel has brought up multiple times going, oh, well, once they're married, they're like tied together and ball and chain and they're no longer a solid person. And that was never the case. And that would never be the case. That is not the case in a normal marriage you saw people that weren't even a part of the Spider-Man fandom literally going, what the crap is wrong with this situation? Yeah. Like I had people that were part of the horror community and the haunt community literally saying, what the crap is happening here? From that question, which I think was a brilliant way of at least bringing that up, even if that wasn't intentional. So, all right, go ahead, Zach. Sorry. Just trying to make sure things are clear. <laughs> yeah. Well, just to, since Zach seems to be frozen, to oh, no! go to his point, the thing that would, you know, that need, in my opinion, would need to be rectified or fixed, like we were kind of getting with the Kindred arc before it did a whole 180. Because the problem isn't whether or not they're married or not. The problem yes. is... Story-wise, you made a deal with the devil and you didn't get your comeuppance from it, 
which is how these things are always going but, in storytelling. But also neither did the devil. The devil didn't get what apparently they thought was going to be happening. Yeah, like it's just it's just bad. Well, no, because well, and this is something this is something we've talked about privately. The issue at hand yeah. is we've had bombastic story after bombastic story. It almost is everyone is running at the seat of their pants. No one is thinking straight. No one is thinking long term. They're not just writing a solid story to write a solid story because everyone loves Spider-Man. No, 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 no. They've got to write this story to make sales, which makes sense. I mean, we understand yeah. the IP has to be fed. But and it's since getting brand harder. new Exactly, because since Brand New Day, yeah. it has been blockbuster after blockbuster without any thought about the fallout. And now we're sitting here dealing with everything that is basically just fallout because there is nothing left to pull from. And this is what we are dealing with. And that's the issue. And that's kind of why, like I was saying earlier, I was like, everyone just feels numb and lazy. There, There's You're no... Hidden. There's no love or drive here in writing this. No, not at all. You're hitting the nail right in the head. And the people who say, bring back the marriage and everything will be fine. It's been my experience after many years on the internet. People don't like complex answers. They want simple answers. So to them, it's the marriage. The marriage will cure it all. Bring it back. But you'll still end up with bad stories if it's this team. You need a strong editor and a writer who gets these characters, which Nick Spencer did, and like I said, like we said, it took a dump at the end. But so, so here's so, my thing. I I also want to bring up there were many times during the marriage where the storylines weren't great. Agreed. That's my thing. The yeah. the marriage never fixed anything. In fact, I will actually agree with some of the concept, like some of the aspect that the marriage made things worse because there were certain writers that got a hold of it during the marriage era that just could not write a marriage because either they weren't married or they didn't understand like they just didn't understand how to write that and i understand that however i do think that's more of a weak point in the writer less so in the actual story um but in general that's kind of where this all came from was there was this big gaping like issue in writing Spider-Man in the 90s. And the way to fix like the way that they decided to course correct was wrong. And now here we are. How do you fix something that has honestly been irrevocably broken without a major reset that you can't do? And that's kind of the issue that I have. And that's why it's like, I understand why people are angry, but you have to understand the constraints that everyone's under. You have to see the bigger picture. The characters aren't, first things first, the characters aren't driving the story. And I don't know how much was I missed because my internet was. No, that's fair. That's fair. We, that's uh, ultimately what we're saying is that the characters are driving the story. Like the thing is the marriage is not going to fix things. So it doesn't matter if they're married or not. Because ultimately, like I said, the marriage at one point was a huge writing problem. So I understand them not being married. They don't have to be married. They should be together. And that's something that I think honestly came organically. Because it was a lot of writers didn't want them to be together, but these characters managed it anyway. And I, that to me is something that's very beautiful and unique to Spider-Man. Because Mary Jane was never written to fully be a full love interest. She was never written to be endgame. Because at the time, I don't think there was an endgame. It was Gwen Stacy. That's yeah. what Stan wanted him to marry. Yeah, even though um, I will also state that I had to defend Mary Jane towards a Gwen fan who only knew her from the movies. You know, the movies that were based more on Mary Jane's personality than Gwen. But all right. Uh, so this, anyway. This spectacular radio. Weisman goes an entire rant about how they were role reversed in the movies. They are. They are. They are. He's right. He, Weisman is right. <laughs> but What's the that? thing that I have, the thing, huh? I I, I thought Hobby was. I'll shut up. All right. I, I, Hobby. Oh, was... oh no. Oh. Okay. All right. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Kel. Sorry. And then I'll jump in after you. 
I've lost my train of thought. But uh, no, ultimately, the whole situation is <sighs> there was a lot of discourse amongst kind of like pro marriage and anti marriage fans, and it's and it's not an age gap either, because that's something editorial has also brought up. It's not an age gap. There are people that are 21 years old who have never known a comic book with Mary Jane and Peter Parker together. But they would prefer it because other media has shown that they're quote-unquote in-game. And that's kind of where the writing ha- is claiming. Like when they're in interviews and they're talking, like Zeb Wells had the interview saying basically Mary Jane was in-game. I don't know how that's happening with this story right now uh i will i will trust his vision although i am currently side-eyeing it but um but you know you know what i mean like that's why my thing like my thing is is that we're now having writers go oh well you know they're in game but we can't have them together right now and it's like but the thing is is someone can go back 15 someone can go back on their marvel unlimited app Go to the, the original Civil War, something that they have promoted multiple times because of the MCU, and show that they're together and they're married. And that's the thing that I don't seem to think Marvel understands. They are not addressing the problem with their IP. Their IP is a mess. It's completely trashed. One More Day slash Brand New Day was a bad decision period and instead and they need to just admit to it and then correct it but it is going to take a long time because it, the idea behind it is not entirely wrong if that makes yeah. sense i i understand we need to keep peter young we need to keep mj young maybe we don't need them as parents which i know sounds controversial and how dare the biggest mayday fan ever say that but I get that point, and that's kind of why it's. I un- they don't necessarily have to be married; but they do need to be together. Agreed. And, and to me, the other there's other issues with the IP. Like I don't know why are we turning every single solitary supporting character into a super super powered human being? Like pretty much everybody but Jonah and Robbie right now. Have superpowers. You got Liz that is about to get a symbiote. You got Flash who has a symbiote. Except you have Jonah was the spider. Nor- Normie, Normie has a symbiote. Normie has a symbiote. <laughs> hey, freaking sorry. Careful. Language. Uh, but uh, there was a ten-year-old with a symbiote. There was a ten-year-old who is a anti-hero right now in the Spider-Man universe because apparently everyone that Peter loves gets to be a villain now because that's the only way to create drama that writers seem to know i have issues i mean Sorry. you know we, we got hollows eve which granted granted i hollows do like eve. hollows eve hollows eve number one came out today and i was floored how good of an issue it is and again this is goes to my my issues with slot versus with um like even with Zeb wells and just the editorial direction that we've seen over the last 10 years where they'll throw out all this st- stuff with these events, and then there'll occasionally be some good things that are written that are kind of hidden gems, like, you know, how uh, Robbie Thompson wrote Silk, how uh, Scarlet Spider was written by Chris Yost, how um, Gold Goblin has been really good, in my opinion. And now Follows Eve, really good, at least with the first issue. So I am, but again, in all those cases, we can do things differently than make him a villain and give them powers. We can do things more than that. There is more that you can do with the intellectual property than make them villains and give them superpowers. Let's just write good stories. Like that's, that's. And, no, and, that's impossible. <sighs> Sorry. Good point, Zach. I, there was a time in this book where it was predicated on Peter balancing his civilian life and his superhero life. 
And we've lost that distinction now in this current era. Like he doesn't have that, that private life of just normal people because even his roommate is dating the supervillain. Okay. So here's my thing. I don't actually think this is what I think is kind of funny. And also I think mm, it, it could be written as intentional with the right writer. He has not been given that autonomy since Civil War, which is really funny because he didn't he make the deal with the devil to keep that? And since then has not had that. And it's almost felt like this entire time he's been spending more time being Spider-Man than being Peter Parker. All the stories surround, surround it being like spider-man or surround it being kind of like how spider-man messes up that relationship nothing has been defined since that time point and that's something that like i i literally will bring up for almost everything that we have a problem with right now because that's ultimately the issue yeah brand new day ruined everything and yeah, I, I'm not meaning that to be mean. Like it's not me being mean at slot. That wasn't slots. No, that was editorial. It like, was editorial. Or... No, like, exactly. Like slot just had to write the story. And so, like I said, like anything I'm saying, I'm not being mean towards anybody. I'm not even blaming editorial for it. I get why editorial had to do it, yeah. especially at the time and what they were dealing with and the overarching IP situation that they had to sell to Disney for the merger. I get well, it. I'm not mad, but the issue at hand is it was a bad call. Period. And, and not only that, too, the amount of character assassination that had occurred at the during during the the merger between Toy Biz and, and Marvel. I mean, the 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 final chapter, the fi- the end of the vo- first volume into the reboot did so much damage that it took years to get it back to back to even the status quo. They did so much profound damage to the character that it took literally. Uh, and, and I don't blame Howard Mackey. Howard Mackey. I, I don't blame because he was a company guy. You know, he's, he's, he's tasked with writing spider, you know, Spider-Man twice a month after writing the book for almost a decade, then you're, he's burnt out. Like the, the, it was a very misguided notion. To bring Howard Mackey on as the guy. If you'd done G- DiMatteis, he'd have gotten burnt out too. But I don't know if he would have done he would have done well with it. So then you bring in Paul Jenkins, and then it starts improving, and then you bring in JMS, and he does a great job. But then he pulls it too far, like what Kelly says, and so they have to do the reset of one more day. Um, you know, because we haven't taught again. I'm glad we're talking about this because we've never talked about that on this show. Because we all, you know, we picked up from Spencer. And then we move forward. We talked about doing the slot debates and that's still happening. That's still going to be a, something that we do. It's going to be, I think, uh, here and comic binge. Um, but at the same time, it, there, there, there are some fundamental problems and just blanket saying that the marriage is going to fix it all. Is, is, mis- is there's, there's, so possible. Many, yeah. there's so many more layers to this onion that you got to peel back to fix. And it's, it's a it's a, a Shrek and Fiona situation uh, <laughs> for you Gen Xers and yes. early and uh, baby millennials like myself. It's a Shrek situation. There are many layers to this onion, and unfortunately, a marriage is not a band aid, and that's something that you should learn. Something that we make jokes about on Make Fine Mayday. Listen, take it from the guy who's been married and divorced twice. Marriage is not an end to a journey. It is a whole different journey. And trust me when I say this, um, the fact that they don't treat it like a new journey and a different journey just shows how short-sighted that they actually are. That's so is where the, I agree. This with is you. my thing. Okay. Go ahead. I didn't. I don't. I didn't want to like overstep Zach, and things were cutting out for me. But um, the things that I, I do have to say is, yes, 
the issue at hand right now is editorial seems to play into the, oh, marriage is in game. The issue at hand, though, is that the marriage is just the end of one journey into another. And they don't seem to take it as that. They seem to take it as marriage all of a sudden means you have to be an adult and you have to grow up and you have these extra responsibilities. Something that we also could argue would be integral to Spider-Man. But here we are. Um, The thing is, though, is that that's not always the case. Marriage is literally a piece of paper telling the government that y'all can file taxes jointly and that's it at this point yeah if, if you take the that's out of it out out of like, it literally that. i i i just i don't understand this like because at the at, at this point marvel comics takes marriage more seriously than most churches <laughs> And it's awkward. She's right. All right. So, um, yeah, we've kind of exhausted. I, anyway, I, sorry. No, you're good. No, I, y'all, no I, y'all, are, y'all are welcome to like, this is my normal wine time, I guess. On Wednesday. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you if for I, being here. If, if I had known, I would have brought my tequila. Oh, yeah. Yes, but also that would have been an entirely different situation because if I had known yeah. you had tequila, then I would have had tequila and there would be a different conversation. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to bring whiskey tonight and I looked in the other room. I just brought water. So, uh, okay. In, in fairness, I had no intention of having a drink tonight. I actually was going to save this and I feel a little bit bad because my friend Raina cosplays Danny from uh, Game of Thrones and I found. The House of Dragon red blend at the Total Wine. And it was like 16 bucks. And I was like, oh, I'll buy that. And then like next time I see her, maybe I'll see her at a uh, Oscar party. We'll have it for her birthday. But I opened it. I have to buy her a new one. It's fine. Again, it's 16 bucks. Honestly, kind of actually good for 16 bucks. So if you see it at your Total Wine, you should buy it. <laughs> Total Wine, a new sponsor for the Spider Radio Network. <laughs> technically, technically, okay, technically, it is done by HBO. So, oh, uh, Josh needs to hook us up. It's a conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, Josh needs to hook us up. It's fine. It's an entirely yeah, different subsection. True, actually. We're not going to talk about the last time we talked about HBO on one of the Spider Radio Network podcasts, and and Josh had to sit there and give a disclosure about. Uh... <laughs> That was Spectacular Radio also, I believe. The final episode. Hey, hey, Chris works at Total Wine, so it's fine. Nice. Yeah. Speaking what, 30, of HBO 30% off makes it 10 and bucks, their properties, so. I, I have to wonder on, on this marriage conversation that we're having, if, there's, if they feel any kind of pressure with what DC's doing r- right now. Because both The Flash and the Superman line are firing on all cylinders. And that's featuring reunited married superheroes with kids. And they're doing really well over there with those types of stories. I got, yeah. I got a thought. I got a thought. Um, so let's hear it. I, okay. So I do actually think that that is a point of contention currently. And I also think that they are going to wait for the next Spider-Verse animated movie to decide what they want to do there. And yeah. that's not a I wrong idea. It, well, it's, it's also, it's not a wrong idea to have, to wait, even though preliminary situations can kind of show you that everybody is literally excited for Peter B. Parker to wear a baby Bajorn, which is crazy because there's people that I never knew new spider girl like they maybe they maybe found it in their school library or at the book fair or something like but they never picked it up they never continued it they kind of moved on with their life and didn't think about it again i have had come out of the woodwork to go oh my god you know this character i thought i dreamt her but she's real all because of peter b parker wearing a baby bajorn 
Well, this is you the power. And I, this, you know, this is the power of the Scholastic here. And you and I painfully know how Marvel likes their synergy. Because how many symbiote Spider-Man stories did we sit through, featuring guest spots of characters who are showing oh, up in the oh, movie oh, that oh, month? Is, is, this, is this why you're not on the Crawl Space uh, Patreon? Oh because right now that's all Tyler. I'm not touching anything unless Mayday's involved. Or I Normie, anymore. I will. I will touch. I will touch something of Normie's involved because I do love my Normie Osborne. I love my baby Osborne. He is a good being and loves Disney, and that is something that they have actually somehow carried over into the six one six. We've already that is a thing. Our head as the fact that um, you know Normie is a Disney farm. Well, that's not a okay it's not a headcanon if it was literally written into the script it's in literally spider girl issue 91 venom tells us that normie collects everything disney and watches all of the direct to video sequels which means he knows every single line to every freaking song in aladdin king of thieves <laughs> just throwing that out there anyway the whole thing though is is that um because i've lost my train of thought because i'm just like normie and disney corporate uh, but, synergy Peter corporate Parker, energy. Bjorn. Yeah. yes uh so the thing is is that a lot of your quote-unquote casual fans uh, equate peter as a father in a certain way because of the scholastic book fair of the 90s Regardless, if Marvel understands that maybe they weren't the best selling situation, they had a lasting impression regardless if they sold. Because let's be fair here, the Scholastic Book Fair was targeted to kids who had a limited amount of funds. And they're probably going to pick that Goosebumps book that they see that's already on Nickelodeon versus... a what's essentially a manga because that's the way it's made you know of a marvel comic book but the thing is is they still recognized spider girl is the daughter of spider-man that exists that was there regardless if they picked it up they knew that as fact and that's something that i don't think marvel seems to understand i don't i know for a fact disney doesn't understand because disney is disney um so that's kind of what we're dealing with right now. So I do think ultimately we are going to get to a situation where Peter will be a father. I do not think it will be our May, but it will be, they will be called May Day um, more so than Annie. And that has everything to do with the creators. Uh, Laura, uh, which is funny. It's the clone high creator. Lord and Miller. Yeah. Lord, Lord and Miller. Miller. Um, because they love the name Mayday. If you go through any of the interviews right now, if you're talking about like them, like it sounds like they fought for it because they are willing to hmm. scream Mayday from the top of their lungs right now. And I love it. I'm excited about that. Um, but obviously baby May, baby Mayday in this movie is not spider girl May. I've caught her a few times in the background, like actual May, not whatever the heck that one guy off our Discord thought was May, <laughs> and it clearly was Doc Ock, but whatever. Um, <laughs> he was willing to die on a, on a hill for that one. That was fun. He was, and it was weird because, like, I kept pulling the thing with actual May Day, you know, but it, whatever. Anyway, um, Baby May is not May Day like our mayday and i will die on that hill and i think that that's fair because it's a baby why are you putting all of that on a baby period that's just weird um but yeah no uh marvel i think will go the route of clark and lois to bring this all around i'm sorry i'm adhd but to bring this back around to the original question with dc it will be the clark and lois of marvel once Marvel realizes that there is a viable IP outside of comics for it. Just like DC quite didn't do that until Amy Jo Johnson's t directed uh, episodes of Clark and Lois. 
Yeah. And I am name dropping Amy Jo Johnson. <laughs> go, go Power Rangers. All right. So yes, she, but you know, she did direct like three of those episodes that the really focus on second Jonathan. season premiere or the second season or yeah. the second episode of the and, second season. And I'm, I'm, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, they all focus really heavily on Jonathan. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I have, I, I've watched season one. I have not watched season two yet and I need to catch up. She's great. She is an amazing director, and we should all praise her. Also, she's awesome, and she would love wine. So maybe y'all should figure out a way to interview her one day. Is she is she the one who's the pink Power Ranger? Am I am I getting my people not mixed up? Yes. Yes, it's Kimberly. It's the only pink Power Ranger you ever need to know. That's fair. Most the most prominent one at least. I remember she was in a TV uh, movie on VH1 where she played a singer. And she kept like singing like I'm a motherless child. Like, like <laughs> she kept singing that. It was so weird. But yeah, that's when VH1 was making movies. Oh like, god. A long Paul, time ago. Paul, I need to explain her <laughs> albums to you. I need to explain her folk wait. singer career <laughs> to you. Wait, wait, wait. That wait, she's actually a legit folk singer? Because that's what she yes. plays. She played like a seven oh, she played like yes. a 70s singer. That's crazy. What the hell? <laughs> yes, no, she is a folk singer. Okay, so one of the things, and this is this is something that's probably going to make everybody tear up and cry, um, but part of her really big friendship with Jason David Frank was the fact that he really supported her music career, and he's one of the people that helped champion her to actually play and sing live on Power Rangers before she left. So there's that song that she plays for Tommy. That was something that both of them championed for. Um, mm-hmm. It's one of the reasons why when he yeah. did pass away, uh, she had done a few uh, Instagram concerts in his honor. Mm-hmm. And so, no, her, she had a really big folk career, and I really love her music. I actually really love her music. It's really great. That's if awesome. you like, if you like that genre, uh, genre, I will. I will admit that that's not everybody's cup of tea. You should trademark genre, by the way. That's great. I like that. That's but no, no, right? Yeah, right. I, yeah. I know. But that's you know good. what I mean. You know what I mean. Like my thing is, is that mean. she is a, mean. she's a really amazing yeah. artist. Period. Like actress, singer, uh, songwriter, music. director, script writer. <laughs> like awesome. I, I am here for Amy Jo Johnson. Amy Jo Johnson's supremacy, ultimately. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. You know what? You know what? How about she? If Marvel was smart, they would do a Disney Plus series of Renew Your Vows, which I know is not May Day and everybody be upset with me, but they do Renew Your Vows and then Amy Jo Johnson would direct it all. Yep. There you go. There we go. All I right. Had, I, I'm actually go. surprised that she directed episodes of Lois and, or not Lois and Car, sorry, uh, Superman and Lois. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm not sure. Oh, that. that's awesome. Multiple, right. multiple. And yeah. they're that's great. pretty, they're, they're a fan awesome. favorites, actually. Right <laughs> they're on, really right good. On. That's done cool. a ton of directing of shows that are based in Canada. So she's actually probably one of the most prominent Canadian directors. Mm-hmm. On top. She uh, directed some episodes of Flash, uh, but that, of course, applies to everybody in Canada. Yeah, I was going to say, who hasn't? I've been uh, <laughs> to the Flash. I haven't. I, didn't tell you guys. I haven't. I have. Fair. Uh, so so, so I, I came late, and I, I can only imagine what's been going on with given the last couple of issues that have come out and what, what Kelly was just kind of monologuing on, you know, about May Day and whatnot. So is it what I think it is, what we're talking about? This this has been the most unconventional review show. We did to say the a two-minute yeah. recap of both issues. I'm and then sorry! Straight into the... Oh, no, you're good. We drove straight into the... I love her like a sister out of context thing. Mm-hmm. And then we've hey, just been, oh my was, God. I think we're yeah. all, we had we've opinion. skirted over Let's see. the we've Dodson got, art. We've got six people on here. I think we're pretty much of, uh, we're in agreement that that entire panel yeah. was taken out of context. Right. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's you, crazy. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I see. I stay, I try to stay away from spoilers and I try to stay away from, you know, all the stuff on social media as far as like, you know, when it initially comes out. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, I don't, I guess I don't follow enough Spider Man people who spoil things because I, I missed it. I, and thankfully I did because I kind of just finally sat down and read it because I hadn't got a chance to get to the comic shop and pick it up and read it. 
but people were kind of up in arms lately with this whole like black cat spider-man thing which it's it's so weird for me because i've talked about the show before that i just reread you know or read for the first time in some issues um the whole black cat spider-man relationship this last year and you know i i love the black cat like legitimately like love the character i really i've always liked the character when i got into spider-man have you read the jed mckay run you know, you know, if Pete was here, he would be like, yeah. I, I know, you, I know, you did it for Pete. I, know you I did, did it for good him. as he uh, should. They, uh, I know, I know. Listen, I, I love Jen McKay, um, and I like Black Cat a lot as a character. Um, you know, I, like I said, when I, when I first started reading comic books, she was around, and I, yeah, she's cool. Um, I've never, even after rereading it this last year, I don't like them as a couple. And that's the thing I've always liked about the th their whole relationship is that it's 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 based on just a very surface level of, in my opinion, like that's the way I I read it as and interpreted it as in the comic books back in the day, and it just always you know they they maintain a good friendship, but when it, they're more than friends, it just it just doesn't seem right to me, even like back reading it's it then and, and reading it now, it just doesn't feel right. But I think that's, I've gone ad nauseum. I don't want to go crazy on this. So I've, I've done deep dives on this myself. <clears throat> and Zach's heard it and everyone, you know, you know, it's heard this. But the thing yeah. is, I, I, I definitely, this really, I'll just recap it here. I, I definitely think this is all purposeful. I definitely think, you know, that when Spencer left, there was, they had to regroup. And this is a part of the regrouping and trying to push, they're delaying something, in my opinion. I could be wrong. But when I came into the show and Kelly, you were going off about Mayday and, and you know, Peter being a dad, I couldn't agree more because that's the thing. I definitely feel, and I've said this before too on the show about how Peter and, you know, honestly, Superman and Lois and that whole thing within the comic books and the TV show has shown that to Marvel, in my opinion, that being married can, it's fine. And you can have other interpretations of the character to keep that the spirit of Spider-Man. And Miles is, you know, basically Superman and Lois and that whole relationship. And Miles Morales will basically save Mary Jane and Peter's marriage at some point. I'm not sure when. I think, I, I mean, just look at the cover of um, the last Paul, issue. Paul, you're, you're giving too much credit to Marvel editorial right now, though. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's fair. That's fair. But listen, I, we don't know. That's the thing. is We don't know what exactly is going on. And that's why I just think, look at that co last cover of Nick Spencer's run. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man holding a bouquet of flowers from a wedding. I mean, yeah. it's not, I mean, it's not like it's. I mean, and and like I remember back in the day, I remember was probably rolled their eyes at me at the time, and probably still do. That's fine. Um, but when um, remember when they they really uh, re-released the, the wedding book? They and did. I'm like, yeah, no, I no, no, yeah, no, no, but... no. They did, they did, and I like. I mean, Paul, you remember because I'm. Secret, well, not so secretly obsessed with actually finding the dress that got lost <laughs> when they did the um, media event. Um, because that is that people do not realize that that dress was stolen from the. <laughs> that dress was crazy. freaking stolen. That's why. Right. <laughs> but, but so so so. Anyway, but again, but, but I, that's the whole thing. They were bringing all of that that up back. Yeah, and for nothing happened from that, and I think that that had a lot of editorial hand in that because something happened somewhere where it wasn't approved, or see, I, I, see, I, I don't. Someone's I, in a field. Um, I, 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 there's what I would say. I, I think yeah. that I, I, I don't think you're wrong, but I, what I do think, in my opinion, again, I have no idea. I'm the sports football. Well, no, like I said, something. Something happened. I'm I'm here yeah. with you. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so, I'm here with you. Something happened. I don't know what, but something happened. And it's so I, I created a I weird. Think, it, it's created yeah. this weird pocket where we're now written into a hole. Well, I I think what in this I've said this before too. I think there's a couple things that happened. I think Nick Spencer leaving that that erupted a lot of this, and I think the pandemic did that as well. You put all of it. It's, it's a perfect storm more than it was. I think one thing, but I think Nick Spencer, you know, that whole thing probably was the biggest. I think what ended up happening, in my opinion, from what I, the peripheral, just from my own judgment, it seems like they also knew that across the Spider Verse was going to be delayed, 
And they said, we got to delay this because we're losing Nick Spencer. We're losing a big chunk of things. We, you know, we, we have to figure, we, we need to buy some time. And I think Ben Riley, sorry, Zach, was the, the, was them biding themselves time because that basically, you know, got them up to speed for a while. And, you know, for a while I was thinking like, maybe that's wrong, but the fact that they've gone so hard of showing Peter and MJ not together by like the kids, you have MJ and Felicia together. They are basically, and I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to be right, but maybe I'm wrong, but we'll see. I think they're just trying to show you and delay it as much as possible to have a big gratifying moment because Nick Spencer, his whole, his whole buildup, there's no way that, that that doesn't pay off if he stays on. So all those things combined. And now that you, it's, it's, I'm going to tell you guys, when I saw the trailer with, with baby May, you know, with, with Peter hanging out with baby Maine and the little like jumper thing, whatever, like I was like, man, this is like, so going to happen. No doubt in my mind now. And so I think I just, it just feels like it's going to eventually happen. They're just, they're biting themselves time probably for either a release of the movie or something. I don't know, but I think it's definitely going to happen. They, they hinted at May in the last couple of issues with Nick Spencer. So I, I definitely feel like that it's all going to happen. I don't know when, and I don't think they're going to tell us either. I mean, even like Zeb Wells is like, I'm going to go out here. I'm, I don't care about pissed off the fans. And I'm like, oh, come on. Like, like, don't, like, don't pretend like it's like you're doing this out of like complete creative control. I mean, that's, it's just not, it's just, it's to me, in my opinion, it's editorial. They're, I mean, they're in control. I mean, editorial has always been in control. It's always going to happen. So, but to me, I feel like with everything's pointing towards miles can be the single Spider-Man you've got, obviously you got spider Gwen, ghost spider as another, you know, single kind of character. You know, the, the, to really carry the spirit of Peter Parker's single life. That was, it's, again, I don't need that, but everyone apparently at editorial needs that. But either way, you have them championing that whole idea. And now you can have Peter be represent that family man, you know, aspect that I think is still important, obviously. So, um, yeah, I, I'm ex- I definitely feel like the Felicia and Spider Man thing is not, uh, it, it's just not my thing. I love I love them as friends. I don't like them as a relationship at all. It I feels agree. very unnatural for me for Peter because Peter's not like that. He's not. I mean, I'm gonna be a prude here. I don't think he's some like sex hound like dude. That's not Peter to me. I mean, you know what I no. mean? Like he's not. Felicia is is, wait, is given that. Wait, that's... wait, 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 wait. But Paul. Yes. Are you, are you saying that Felicia is a sex hound? No, not necessarily, but like I would say, like she's just kind of. She's very open about more, her sexuality. She yeah, is. yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, no, exactly. she's but she's open say. about her sexuality, not yeah. about the frequency that she has sex. That's there That's is right. a difference. There is a difference. I, and I, and I, let me rephrase that. It's because the way she brings it out is a lot more open and a lot more just upfront, and it just doesn't make doesn't really match up for me with Peter. It just doesn't. It just it just to me, it just doesn't line up. And again, no, I like. I'll, 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 I'll agree guy. with you on that. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm. Te- I'm. Ultimately, I'm teasing you. I will say that because I That's agree. Dumb. They call me out. It's good. I agree. Um, Felicia and Peter do not match. In that sense, not romantically, not sexually. They just. They don't seem to be a fit. And that's something that I think was brought in in the comics on purpose back in the exactly, day. Exactly, yeah. They just don't yeah. match, but they are good friends. I I personally, I've been joking that, you know, you know Silk and Felicia would be together because I'm, I'm into that pairing for some reason. Um, <laughs> but ultimately, yeah, right? Like, you can see it. It's fine. I can see it. I can see it right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like, it. She, sh- Peter and Felicia, that ship, sailed a long time ago i think ultimately they are very very close friends who respect each other and respect that they don't fit together yeah that's what i liked about the relationship i liked yeah. the fact that like like again nick spencer did a great job initially like i love the moment when black cats like you took away a really important part of me when like you know your secret identity for me that's what you know right? I, I loved you i love that moment. that was my like, thing that was very yeah good, yes. that was that yeah. was so gr- again that's using continuity to your advantage and yep. to in all cases and i love that moment and it really helped me 
I, this it sounds so stupid, but help me come to terms with their relationship a little bit myself as a fan. Like, I'm like, oh yeah, like they, they actually like, it, it made me really like love Felicia more because I, again, she's not just some like, when I say sex, I want to re- rephrase this. I, I feel bad for saying that. I apologize because because in the early her early appearances, that's kind of what like again, that's early days, and that's a lot all dudes writing well, and it, everything. It, well, it's also it's it's again, it's one of those things where I don't think writing meant to to intend someone to be pictured some way, but editorial yes. had to make sure that they were edited that way. Because this is my mm. thing is I think. Felicia in and of itself kind of represented a lot of what was free and powerful in the eighties. Yes. And ultimately that's not how she got edited. And that's also ultimately how some parts and some writing over the years have kind of used that as a negative towards Felicia, but that's not as we know, like that's really kind of a hindrance to her character. No, totally. And, and, and the thing is, I, I, I just love to see that there actually was a, a real love for her, for Spider-Man and for Peter, you know, and I love that Nick Spencer really tapped into that. And I, it's just kind of a bummer that we're going back into the old like, oh, Felicia's this wild, crazy lady. And then like Peter's got to be like, oh, Felicia, I got to hold you back here because you're too crazy. Okay. You know, it's like. It's like, come on, guys. Which is, whatever. What, I mean, which is what these whole two issues were, too. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I, yeah. I, I agree exactly with that. I agree with yeah. that. Yeah. I and also so, want to jump in and make a larger point right quick. My big, The biggest thing that I think people should understand about these two issues is, one, these are not written by Zeb Wells. These are written yeah. by Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly. A, number two. Number two. Whether or not that they pick up from this, that's up to Zeb Wells and the editorial staff. But at the end of the day, I sh- you should not sit there and go all out on the outrage over a two issue arc that was guest written by somebody to fill in to buy time because you did this whole big event with, uh, with dark web. <sighs> Sorry. I've been trying to say that for a no, so <laughs> No, 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 no. That's, that's entirely fair. Also like, mm-hmm. again, we need to bring that up as in the fact of people are getting upset over a comic panel that was taken out of context that as I have mentioned as a joke, although honestly thematically still fits Absolutely. It's a Taylor Swift lyric. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. If the Swifties well, are cool I'm with expect- it. Yeah. Y'all but Paul can didn't expect chill. it to go to, to there. But yes, I've I, listened. I've listened to the song because of Kelly. <laughs> it's well, a great wait, song. It's a great song and you know it. Uh, I, 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 I wanted to do that panel. I, it was so funny when I read that read the issue. I was expecting like something, I guess, a little crazier. And I read that issue and went, oh, this is what they're upset about? I'm like, right? it, I was just laughing. I'm like, this is, I, I, I guess I just interpret. I, I knew exactly what Peter was, exactly what Peter was doing when he said it. I'm like, I was like, like my sister, and, and, you know, and then police is like, nope. Yeah, I, that, I, I laughed out loud. I was that, like, this yeah. is perfect. <laughs> She's like, yeah, okay. right. Like, yeah. like I said, Joe, Joe Kelly's comedic timing, his comedy is not necessarily for me, but his, Timing is good, and that you know, she's like Perfect. my sister. Nope, try again. Nope. Like, that's, yeah, I try again. That's, that was great. That's good. I don't know. To me, to me, that didn't even read as like a direct, like, you know what I mean? Like, when it turns to comedy, it's not like a direct, like, line, but it's yeah. a lead up to the comedy. Like, sure, that it's, it's a Veronica Mars esque conversation, old, old, old school CW like realness which i i enjoy that's what i enjoy about joe kelly's writing he he is very much a millennial um and yes that's maybe that's the issue maybe it's a generational thing but like my thing was like do you not realize that literally taylor swift in 2017 talked about her current boyfriend joe alwyn in this song and said, trust you like a brother. And only about like 10% of the Swifties were like, hey, hey, Taylor, that's that's inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah. That's so and I was like, I don't think Joe meant it that way. Like, honestly, I think he was just using it as like, this is a normal line people say to like hide their feelings. Yeah. It's a Am very I- 90s teen show shit. But it was really funny because I was like, that's a Taylor Swift lyric. Yeah. The, the whole the whole point of the arc is 
Felicia trying to get Peter to come to terms with how he feels about MJ and to because be honest about it out loud. Yeah. Felicia's yeah, the only exactly. one who seems to be on the right track. Yeah. That's, but I'll be also, honest, that's the yeah. one thing. Felicia's the only person that seems to still be on like the normal comic track while everyone's dealing with like this weird 20 year aftermath of Brand New Day. Yeah. But this also could be. I and, and again, may, I may be I'm probably wrong, but it, this could be also mirroring what happens in the comics back in the day too, right? Because what happened before they got married? He was with Felicia, yeah. and what's going to happen here? Like it's almost going to be that full circle. Like okay, he's going to get with Felicia again, so they can kind of like you know funnily you know funnily so uh, when, mirror when that. that uh, but all right, so not quite devil's advocate here because I don't actually well, agree with that. But devil's advocate. <laughs> The, yeah, right. But the issue at hand Mephisto's is advocate. Okay, so the issue at hand is obviously so Marvel has this big thing right now where if it, a female character is being written as a solo, they have to be written by a female character. That's kind of been something we underscore know about, regardless if it's right or not. And the issue that I have there is knowing that Marvel takes a lot of stock in that into the Marvel voices. Why would they want to repeat something that honestly was very, uh, was a little bit sexist? Because that back in the day with with Black Cat's original situation of, oh no, I don't want to know your face. I just want to see the the mask part of you. I just want to have sex with that guy. I, I just want that relationship. I don't need to know who you really are, which was very, obviously that relationship was never going to work. Now, had it been written appropriately in the 80s, it could have been a very compelling story, but it wasn't because that was a very male-driven writing crew. I and so kind of yeah. what kind of what you're saying right now, Paul, is you're expecting that to be the same way. And I think No, 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 not that. No, no, no. And I, I don't mean that. It, like, you know what I mean? Like, okay. I'm not okay. yeah. Yeah, attacking yeah. you in this. It's just the way that you're saying it is the way that my brain is working. And I'm going. That's not how Marvel works now. Marvel literally will yeah. spend more money on what they can avoid pissing people off for than actual writing ability. And so, yeah. and I, of course, I'm saying that because I am salty about the way Spider Girl was written in the well, Infinity comic. Were but, Peter and Black Cat dating in Gang War? Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Uh, Wasn't uh, she in his? Uh, no. She was. No. In his apartment yeah, like, in like, like 288, 289. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like right and then the next issue is the proposal. <laughs> is the proposal. Okay, so, he, so, he, so like here's my his thing. Arms. I don't I don't Okay, so this is me thing. I don't really think that they ever were like maybe they were dating for a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, but ultimately I think it was more of just a friends with benefits kind of situation, yeah. which no, was they just were, they a were little a ahead of they, its time. They, they were a thing. They were definitely a thing. They were definitely a thing. Yeah. Was it more of a spec thing, though, than an amazing thing? So I'm still. Yes, I think yeah, it was. 100%, yes, yeah. 100%. Yes. But I swear that, like, in that Hobgoblin revealed issue, like, the, la the end of it is like she's in his apartment and it's like and, and it's funny because peter david wrote that and he wrote a lot of specs so so they, they i don't know i, I, I don't know say, well, that seems I, like an editorial I, mess right there i have I've, I've read it i read it recently and i i'm not gonna say i can remember everything for detail but i remember that obviously the symbiote um storyline kind of revolves around like the end of her of their relationship and also the beginning of reemerging of mary jane because there's that part in the symbiote storyline um, that where, you know, Black Cat's like, we don't even care about me. And like, he has a symbiote and it's a, he's more yeah. aggressive and he goes, don't walk away from me, you know, but drawn by the beautiful Ron Friends. Yeah. And, you know, and she's like, oh, wait, Spider, you wait, do wait, care wait, about wait, me. Wait, 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 Are you also calling Ron Friends beautiful? Because Zach called him ravishing. <laughs> well, he's beautiful. He draws beautiful pictures. Beautiful pictures. So he, he, um, a beautiful ravishing why? Ron Friends. I just want someone to say that officially to him. I said it to him. I said it to him. We said it to him so, on the episode. But, 
Really? So, <laughs> terrific, I, Tom DeFalco, ravishing Ron Friends. No, Ooh, no, I no, like no. it. Yeah, but it's not terrific. No, it's Tom the DeFalco. it's the legendary. the legendary Tom DeFalco. That's in the contract. According according to uh, Rob. It's in the contract. So yeah, so I nice. so I, when I think so when I say that I think Black Cat and them are going back into like I only mean that they're together, not that they're gonna have the same exact relationship. Because I agree, like it was they definitely painted that whole relationship of, you know, I think a little bit more again it's all on the surface i think that was the i think that was the the not the right idea but it was i understood where they were going with it but it was not executed and definitely in hindsight not the best thing you know and everything but i do definitely think that maybe that her being with with peter is going to show that why you're showing why peter and mj are meant to be together and having someone like black cat even though he's someone he loves and cares about as a friend and act, and had you know romantic relation you know love for as well at one point that why that they aren't they aren't meant to be together. I think that's ultimately what we're getting again potentially. Again, maybe I'm totally off on this, but it seems like no, it's that rhyming idea. You know, I, I, I'll be honest with you, Paul. I think that that's ultimately what the writers want. But the issue at hand, and I, this and this is my thing. I think regardless of editorial wants it or not, like if the current mm. editor wants it or not marketing won't let it happen because again marketing is thinking of it as peter gets with mary jane and that's the end game and that's kind of a disney mindset so it's a yellow shoes situation yeah which well, sucks Feige... because it's stupid but i think that that's ultimately the situation that we were running into so until someone can convince someone which may be within the next six months maybe within a year maybe within 10 years it kind of depends on who's running that show yeah well i have a i have a proposal actually because i was thinking about you know okay. how long because things were like delayed right we all agree like yes. there was something going yeah. on things were delayed well one thing we also didn't consider was no way home and one of the things that you know we talked about like even toby's like they, they kind of hint that him and mary mm -hmm. jane are still together and they make it work mm -hmm. you know yeah. and obviously you have you know the peer uh, andrew garfield well, they, character i mean and... wait 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 you do know paul that they did actually have a scene scripted it was just um so COVID. they when it it was COVID actually that wasn't part of it yeah. uh kristen dunce didn't want to come to atlanta while she was pregnant to film the scene I'm blamer. Yeah. Understandable. Well, and that's the thing. Yeah, understandable. So, like, so I see all that because look what's happened at the end of No Way Home, right? You have Mary mm -hmm. Jane who doesn't remember, um, you know, Peter, and he's like, he has to be okay with that. And what I think also you got to think about too, what if, and especially, especially if Tom and Zendaya are still together, imagine marrying Peter and Aunt Mary Jane on the screen and having a comic to kind of go along with that. Like, if that is truly what Sony is doing, Marvel would be smart to delay it, wait for that, and, you know, and co coincide with that somehow. You would have a uh, stroke if that happened, though. Okay, here's my thing, though. Here's my thing. Revort would have a stroke. He's already made, he's been on record multiple times saying that if they ever did that on film, it would kill Spider Man. So, yeah, but well, also, too, also, too. I don't think obviously Marissa Tomei is is dead in that universe. She's not coming back. Um, I would say though, if they did a more Spider Verse esque Spider Man movie, especially given the current uh, award season climate, uh, you know, having Sally Fields and Toby and uh not toby but andrew garfield uh together for something would be great i would say that cheyenne woodley should not be mary jane for the amazing spider-verse uh uh but you know I, I have a feeling that everyone else knows that too so. that ship sailed <laughs> Well, yeah. That ship sailed I, a I, long time ago. So yeah. I, I think I I think it's I think it's possible because if that's because that movie's not you know going to be started filming here in the next what year or so, and so you know you have more stories. I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to quite be the Spider Verse you think it is. Um, and well, that's no, no, just I, I'm knowing. Not saying, I don't think it's going to be a Spider Verse. Like they, you know, you do realize they do film literally around well, me. I'm not saying I'm not saying that. I, I'm just saying from a from a, from a story course, standpoint, yeah. I have I have. I have no idea. I just threw it out there because they're obviously going to get MJ and Peter together, and yes, uh, they will. The MCU yes. version. 
it, and I, I feel like I feel like it, it also makes sense to mirror that because that obviously is a giant everyone knows Zendaya and, and Tom Holland together as as Mary Jane and Peter now like I mean the mainstream anyway so and, and it was for, made, unfortunately it, for them yes I feel bad. I feel <laughs> well, I honestly feel bad for them we we know also that Marvel likes to see what DC does and then one up yeah. them and DC's mm. already done the let's put off Lois and Clark getting married until they get to a point in the TV show and then do it all in the same week. Have the comic and the episode. Yeah. In the same in the day. Week. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, no, no. Have the comic, the episode, the movie, the everything because yeah. uh, WB and yeah. DC are no longer separate. They are the same, the which, same uh, which is a awkward situation that honestly is a double edged sword. It is the snake eating itself. It is not what it. It is not what it's supposed to be. I am upset by it, but yes, no, that's exactly what they're doing. And unfortunately, Marvel is literally sitting here waiting to watch that either crash and burn or succeed, and then they will go from there. And that's the thing about it. It's the weird part of Clark and Lois that, as much as I love Clark and Lois. I am always weary by because for some reason Marvel seems to think that then they can adhere it to every single legacy relationship that they have. And it, that's not accurate. Like that's not right either. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah look, I just want to add a little, really quick thing about these two issues. Um, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm really going to go around and do quick. So. Yeah. Sorry, really? I'll shut up now. I'm sorry, Zach. No, no, it's okay. No, it's this okay. is why I'm you sorry. shouldn't have me on. No, this was lively. I liked this. Yeah. Do we have? Do we, do we have grades? We haven't done grades yet. We have he not done do grades. grades soon. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll, I, my, I'll just give you mine now. Um, that's cool. I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. Um, just really quick. I think these were fine issues. They weren't. They weren't blowing my mind. They were mm -hmm. fun. Dotson's art's good. Um, you know, I. It's weird because there's there's times where I'm like, man, it's Dodson. He, you know, Terry Dodson knows how to, you know, how to blow it up. And then other times I'm like, you know, it's just it's just kind of it's a very inconsistent for me. Um, but I thought Dodson. he did. I think Dodson was pretty solid on this one. Um, and um, I liked art a lot. I lo listen. By the way, I love White Rabbit. Like I love that she's legitimately yeah. become like an like a legitimate villain for for Spider Man now, not just like a joke villain. But like mm -hmm. a legitimate villain, I love her. I'm good and, with that. And yeah. Joe, yeah, and Joe Kelly like totally has built, you know, or not built, but like had a great, like fun, like you know. I just love all the banter with her. Like I love White Rabbit. Yes. The fact that she's yeah. in this is is a, is a plus. But but the whole story with, with Spider Man and Felicia, not my favorite. I, I want it to go away because I, I want obviously like many people, I want Mary Jane and Spider Man, you know, whatever. But that being said, I still enjoy the issues. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I, I give this a B minus. It, it wasn't blowing me away, but it was, it was still enjoyable for what it was. Art was good. Layouts were good. Um, everything else was you know, pretty solid. So yeah, I'd say B minus for me. Uh, Javi, what's your grade? Um, if we're going to go, I mean, it's, I think it's fair to combine the two of them together. Yeah. No. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go with a straight down the middle C. Uh, I wasn't necessarily offended by this comic um there were definitely <laughs> there were JR. definitely moments yeah there were definitely moments that i thought were good and there were definitely moments that didn't sit right with me either from a, a humor standpoint or um diminishing peter as a character and putting him down because i'm really tired of other people commenting on how awful and what a loser peter is uh i'm going to disagree with my buddy paul um, I did not feel this was the Dodson's best work. I, I still like, it. I love their art typically. Um, mm -hmm. but after reading this initially in print and then reading them digitally today, I went back through their Kevin Smith story and, uh, thumb through some of their Marvel Knights stuff. And there's just so much more there on those pages than what we got with this. And, and like we talked earlier before Paul jumped in, I just, I felt this wasn't their best work. I don't know what time constraints they had, but a lot of it felt unfinished and rushed with like 
Peter's spider wasn't finished in one drawing. Like it was missing completely the bottom legs. At one point he had Gumby arms with like (laughs) pinchers. So it kind of detracted from me because I was like, what is going on with the look of this book? But, but yeah, overall it, 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 I, it was okay. (laughs) I, I liked parts of it. I didn't like other parts. Um, I liked it a hell of a lot more than the end of Dark Web. So there's that. Oh, Dark Web. I mean, that, that's a that's a that's a high. <laughs> it's a low bar. bar. <laughs> no, low seriously, bar, yeah. the ending of Dark Web is yikes. Yeah, bad. Says bad. the guy that likes Chasm as a concept. That should I mean, tell jism, you. Chasm. Chasm. Oh. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Chasm. Or Chasm. Uh, <laughs> you know, we can call him that too. No. <laughs> call him Chasm or Ben Riley. Former AKA Scarlet Spider. No. You know how okay. you make a copy of a copy of a copy? Let's, let's not talk about that. Uh, it's losing uh, some of its gonna, file size. Yeah. <laughs> More compressed. <laughs> I'm going to be in the corner. It's definitely a CD format, right? <laughs> right, Adam? Yeah. No, just the sure. fact that I got Zach to say the word twice in an episode. I, I feel pretty powerful right now. There we go. Uh, okay, Adam, what is your grade? <laughs> I pretty much agree with Javi. It's a C for me. Uh, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It was okay. Uh, I agree with Javi about the art. They're like I said earlier. They're they're they when they nail it, they nail it. But there's just a lot yeah. of stuff, a lot of panels. Not not a lot of the big ones, to be fair. But they're just they're like small ones. Yeah, smaller like smaller figures look very very rushed. Can I, the can line I, can work. I, can I, the line work is just yeah, not great, a little right? sloppy. Yeah. And I say this okay. with all due respect because, like I said, I'm not an I'm not an artist. I know it's a hard job, and you know, but I'm just. But there's like, I I gotta say, like, I'll say it right. Okay, the John Romita Jr. stuff we've been getting, uh, he hasn't done anything quite like what I've seen, yep. uh, yeah. in in this one, uh. And what I'm trying to say here is that his art has been more solid than in all the issues he's been in up to this point compared to these two Dodson issues. So it leads but I, mean, me to- I, I, I do like the Dodson's style and you know their I, I art just, in general. Yeah. Really quickly, I, I want to comment on the Dodson's because I like the Dodson stuff. I thought this was pretty pretty good. I, they they did a um a Princess Leia miniseries with Mark Wade. Mm-hmm. You think that would be like a you know a winning you know formula? yikes was not and it, it, it's you mentioned about the smaller panels i remember people telling me how great the art was and there were so many small panels where they did that where it's like they're trying to i don't want to say cheat because it's, right. it's okay. comics man okay but also got, that you, comic sucked it did it was bad <laughs> that, that comic was bad I, I i straight up it was bad but but what i'm saying is they tried to like you know get through it and do a little of the gumby arms and they try to like the, some of the faces I'll never forget. Yeah. I went and I uh, got like a big, pa- a little panel, and blew it up, and it literally looked like two dots in a schoolie line for a face. Oh my God. And I was yeah. like, "Yikes!" Yeah, like, I remember that. So, here's so, my. So, yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly. I do. So, I do because I oh, love so Princess bad. Leia, and I was upset. It was bad. It was. It was a bad. Co- anyway, I just want to add, add that I totally get. I think that was. I definitely noticed that a little bit in this comic, but it, I, again, Kelly can put a test now. You go back to Princess Leia, man. It's like rough. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm gonna say something that and kind of dovetail it off of another artist that I used to make the similar criticism about. When Ramos had his time to, you know, to to polish his craft and and have time to like the standard time to create an issue. His artwork was far superior than when he's sitting there doing deadlines. When he's sitting there at San Diego Comic Con in 2011, at Artist Alley, he would be drawing a commission for like an hour, and then he'd have to stop doing commissions, have to go like find a hole in Artist Alley to to do because he was getting the pages for Spider Island and while he's at San Diego. Um, so you have deadline Ramos, and then you have regular Ramos, and I feel it's very much we had the deadline Dotsons in this one. Versus the uh, versus the the standard Dotsons that when they have time to do these things and it, it's been funny because there's been several times the, over the last couple of years because they would bring him in they brought him in on Beyond I, I recall 
and they brought them in here and they're both kind of the, the work is off. And so I'm wondering if they were brought in, Oh crap, we need to, we need to, we need to stretch out some time. We need to put this, this story, you know, kind of as the, as the take a breath moment for after post dark web that, so I, I don't know how much lead time they had. And I, I'm wondering about that. And so when dot the Dotsons have their time, it's beautiful. I mean, you go, go back and look at the, the, Marvel Knight Spider-Man, the the Evil That Men Do, the early 2000s stuff with Dotson was fun with the Dotsons was phenomenal. But I just feel like between the coloring and the um and and the the fact that it just felt rushed is what really hampered the artwork for me. So in terms of that, my grade is a C plus. Um I don't hate this story. I don't overly love the story but it, it's an okay story it's a it's a nice on one hand as a concept it was a nice reprieve from the the end of the world is happening with dark web okay and now we're getting the answer and now we're you know we're taking a beat and now we're going to jump into starting with uh this month's worth of issues we're gonna we're gonna start getting the answers to all the questions we've been we've been searching for as i knock my cup off of off my desk uh <laughs> So, it happens. It happens. You're passionate. Right, um, anyway. So, uh, Greg, Kelly, I'll let you guys give some final th- final thoughts, and then we're going to start uh, plugging and wrapping. So, all right, Greg. Uh, all right. Well, I didn't read the issue, so I can't really grade them. I will give an A plus to this lively conversation. It was fantastic to sit back and listen to, and I will give the internet. An F. Stop getting angry at <laughs> things out of context. The oh. internet promotes anger. It thrives on anger. And that's not a good thing. No, it's not. Spoken it's like great. a guy that has to deal with some certain fandoms that want to be toxic sometimes. Sis. <coughs> Spider- Spider- Spider-Man is the worst fandom, okay? God damn. Anyway. Kind of, yeah. well, I joked about, them, about the Spider-Man Twitter being like knife fights. And now oh, it's, it's just a like, knife. It's a knife. It's a. It's gang hold fights. On, hold on. Gang what, wars, what, what did I? What fights. did I say? What did I say during the very, very first like mutant ball, whatever the hell Marvel was promoting at the time? Yeah. And then they promoted that photo where I wore a toddler dress, and they were like, "Oh yes, she can come to the red carpet. Just her." Um. Anyway. <laughs> That resulted in a lot of shit back then. Um, and I equated it to we, the Spider-Man fandom is the, the fandom that gets invited somewhere and then we immediately get kicked out because we fought over the ra- Crab Ragoon. <laughs> we're and, the one, um, we no, all no, show- no, 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 no. Like, like we, we decided we were going to knife fight over the Crab Ragoon. And that is what has happened here. Um, as someone who who did actually read the issues mostly just so that way I wasn't lost, uh, I would give the grade for everything uh, again uh, B minus C plus that area. Um, but the fandom itself, yes, no, you the fandom fails. Uh, I I think everyone knows that though from dealing with me because literally I feel like I am the. Uh, I'm I'm that squishmallow. I'm that yellow peep squishmallow that has like two knives sewn into me. <laughs> I'm just I'm pointing them at both sides. I don't. I'm I'm ready for a fight, uh, and I'm gonna win. And that's <laughs> that's the thing. Do people uh, actually eat peeps? No, they're horrible. Don't eat them. She, she drink, she Micro- drink. Just microwave them. It's fun. It's a fun science, science experiment. Exactly. Throw them in a microwave. It's hilarious, and move on with your life. And, and definitely please... don't don't drink uh, Peeps Pepsi. That's disgusting. Oh. <laughs> All right. So let's start promoting because we got ha- almost the entire network on this episode. Yay! <laughs> So, uh, People drink Pepsi, right? Yeah, exactly. No one drinks. You know, you know what, Paul? Yeah, not only sure. do they drink Pepsi, but they do it from Star Wars: The Last Jedi. I <laughs> God, I hate you. I the hatred to be spewed. Uh, I should just the relationship is out. over. 
<laughs> romance is done. Hobby. No. Hey, I bought I the glass hey. before I saw the movie. So hey, I Javi could do no wrong in my opinion. Even <laughs> that, I still love Javi. Thank All you. right, so, so Javi, um, you've got episodes of ASM Classics coming soon? Question mark. Uh, yes, I I need to sit down and edit those ones that I've recorded already and. Uh, maybe there's a, a Spider-Man hot toy unboxing coming yes, to the that, channel soon. Yes, I will, get, I will get that done this week. Uh, I, I may need you to resend me the damn thing because I can't. Yeah. Find it. So, um, but I've got the, I've got the uh, I've got the cover for it, and just I just need to upload it and go from there. So, so out, outside of those aforementioned things. Um, I've got 007 reviews of uh, the Dynamite Comics 007 review, I should say, uh, up at the jamesbonddossier.com. I've got Batman, The Adventures Continue Season 3, and Catwoman, and Gotham City Year One. Uh, if you're not reading that, you should definitely pick that book up over at batmanonfilm.com. And... <laughs> Hopefully by this weekend, if not early next week, I will have my zero issue pilot, whatever you want to call it, uh, first inaugural episode of The Flash, up to speed with Wally West. Hey. It is a podcast that I am doing, just just me right now, and I am starting off with um, issue one of the post-crisis Flash and going through all of Wally's Woo. solo book adventures. Woo. So. Trailers up uh, on YouTube. Uh, and, when, uh, whenever Huntress is on, uh, feel free to give me a call because I will yeah. jump. I will jump on for some <laughs> Helena Helena Bertinelli. So hell yeah, I love the Huntress. Welcome. Yeah. So um, a big applause for that. Up at up to speed five on Twitter. Yes, that is the Wally West account for the show. Or you can, you can find me at Hobby True. At Hobby True, at ASM Classics, all the ASM uh, underscore classics. A, yes, ASM yeah. underscore classics. Classics. Ugh. All the uh, links will be done. editing them very, very short. Uh, I'll be editing them here in a second. Uh, Adam, uh, what do you got going on? Uh, tell everybody what you got going with uh, that guy up there, the one on the other. That other guy? Oh, you know, I'm around. Um, Let's see, you, uh, me, Paul, and Zach, and a couple other guys, the, the Council of Quantumaniacs, I'll call us, uh, we did the, uh, we did the, um, the Quantumania review, uh, for the comic was, binge. It was so much fun. It was so Yeah, much a couple, fun. couple weeks ago, so you should check that out. That went pretty well. Um... And uh, yeah, that's kind of it. I'm on here uh, at Enchilada Legs on Twitter. There you go. Uh, Greg, tell us about voices. What we got coming up? Well, vo voices from the Erie is temporarily monthly. We're going to go back to twice a month as soon as possible. And um, Kelly mentioned uh, Amy Jo Johnson, actress turned phenomenal TV director. Well, Sally Richardson, the voice detective Elisa Maza, phenomenal actress turned TV director also. We have her on the show coming up at the end of the Yay! Month. Good! <laughs> Hell yeah! She's now a producer on HBO for the Gilded Age and their uh, TV series about the Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, P. Thug, what's going on on the bench? <laughs> Paul is going to tell us. <laughs> so we got weekly well, stuff. They are discussing uh, 52. He and Chris Clow and uh, Papa Wentz yeah. and uh, Mr. Baby are diving into 52. They just did issues 1 through 13 uh, yesterday, and uh, they're going to be covering that. And there's going to be other stories that the comic binge is going to talk about also. And, Maybe Paul wants to share what those are. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good episode. It's a good episode. Uh, Bobby, save your ass. Was... Do it, you tried. <laughs> what, what happened? I have no, what just happened? Like, nothing, I just dropped nothing off. Nothing happened. happened. You, you <laughs> dropped off right when I was going to you, and it was funny. So, like, I was like, hey, oh. Paul, what's the bitch? And then you left. <laughs> uh, well, 
So I, so can I, can I, can I speak up really quick about it? Cause yes. I, I got March yes. is like my big, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, Javi, I, I know you're trying yeah. to bail me out here. I, I uh, 52 uh, straight, for you. straight up. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah. 52 was a blast with the, with the Knights of knee, Mr. Baby, Papa Nick was great. Um, man, I gotta tell you right now, March is going to be like the biggest month because one I've got, I don't know if sure if you guys have heard of the YouTube channel for the love of comics. But I uh-huh. managed to get, uh, oh, dude, he's coming on Saturday morning. Oh, he lives cool. in India. So, like, oh, you know, yeah, shit. I'm so Whoa. jazzed. Oh, yeah, I am jazzed. Just jazzed. Because he is, like, the sweetest dude ever. Like, this is the nicest guy ever. And the fact he's going to come on my show, which I have, like, peanuts, like, for, like, compared to him as, like, followers and subscribers. And he's just, like, so nice and generous. I'm like, this guy's, like, the coolest dude ever. So, for, if you are if you are up to you know subscribing to for the love of comics, go do it and then tell them the comment been sent, sent you. Uh, but go go subscribe and he has talk about that dude knows so much more about comics than I'll ever know and he does be barely reads superhero books. I, I envy like his knowledge and his like his taste. Honestly, I'm just like damn. Um, anyway, we're gonna what's really fun because he does like some superhero stuff. We're going to be talking about, I'm going to announce it here, I guess, for the first time. Uh, it's going to be top five favorite Kurt Busiek stories. And um, it's going to be wild because we have vastly different tastes. So you can imagine how that's going to turn out. So I'm really excited um, to have him on. It's going to be great. Um, later on in the month, we have um, uh, Judge Dredd will be pro- part of our um, comic, book, uh, comic book masterpiece series. Um, and we've got a special guest for that. And then we've got, um, we're gonna do a Captain America, uh, Heroes Reborn, Rob Liefeld, uh, oh God. with Rob from, <laughs> yeah, with, with, if, uh, if Rob, I forgot your, it's not, not, not Rob Liefeld, but a different Rob. Uh, I forgot your last name, but Rob is on the Making Star Wars show with Jason Ward. And I got to know him through Making Star Wars and he's awesome. And he's gonna, he's gonna come on and we're gonna talk, that's gonna be wild. If you guys have even watched Making Star Wars and see Rob go off, it's it's like I can just watch him just go off for like an hour. He's hilarious. And like he takes <laughs> he's just always super serious. I love it. Go watch, go watch Making Star Wars and, and tell tell Rob what's up because I love Rob. Um anyway, where he's coming on later in the month. I'll be on one of his shows, I think, too. I, I like then we got static. We're gonna be covering static with a boy Thanks. Chris from Objects of G a geek. Wait, wait, wait. Are you all yeah, talking about it, static the cartoon or static the comic? The comic, man, milestones. We're gonna be talking about that. Like, hey! stoked. I'm like, hey, ask me some Listen, stuff. Come on. I, hey, if you like, if you want to be on static, I'll get you on static. It's, it's, yeah, it's, no, I, I like I, I right, used to right. shock. I that was the that was what I used to use for the gatekeepy comic book guys at the comic book shop. Was I was like, I knew more static than they did. <laughs> yeah, I, I've the, truth. Truth be told, truth be told, I've never actually read a static comic. I only <gasps> read a little bit of hardware. You should, I know, dude. I, I sacrilege. I have the compendium. I've got the compendium. I'm good. Go. No, no, so, no, no. Seriously, listen. seriously, read it. Like it's so good. I'm, I'm soaked. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm gonna be. We're gonna be doing it for the binge with my buddy Chris. I'm, I, I again, I'm actually looking for other people to be on the show. If you, Kelly, if you want to be on it, I, by all means. You're, yeah. You're just, just so. tell me what episode we're talking about and like what's going on, and I'll, I'll be there. Well, like, it's depending it's, on my schedule. Well, yeah, yeah, I'll be there. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah. Um, it's we're reading the first eight issues. That's all we're gonna be doing. We'll okay. have to talk about the show too. That's that's fine. But um, but yeah, we're gonna be doing that. So this whole month is crazy. Plus, I haven't even talked about next week's episode. It's crazy. This is gonna be a giant, giant month. I'm trying to get past the thousands of subs. So it, it's it, this is really cool. I, again, la- I'll say this last thing and I'll shut the hell up. I'm so sorry, Zach. Um, for it's really cool because with with for the love of comics coming out on Saturday, it marks the two year anniversary of uh, the comic bitch, which yeah, is a cre- you know, man. so it's kind of a special moment. Yeah, it's special. It, 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 it was all yeah. It was all kind of like by accident, and I'm trying. My goal was to get to a thousand subs at two years, and I'm like, maybe this one stream with with uh, for love of comics will get me to a thousand. I got a lot to go. I got to got to get a little hurdle in there, but I'm thinking if I can maybe get Kurt Music to retweet something and get the maybe that subscription gods will get me in my favor. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I can do. But I, my goal is to still hit a thousand on Saturday. It's not going to happen, but eh, what the hell? I'll give it a shot. Dude, if so, you get hey, it, thanks everyone. I'm sorry for talking so much. If you get it on month 25, that that's still an accomplishment, buddy. So, so don't don't don't. No, no, I know, I agree. So, um, okay, 
Kelly, as she holds up her prop, the audio listens. <laughs> Kelly, what do you have in your hand? Um, I just, just honestly, because it was just randomly right next to me, uh, I've got a April uh, costume, cosplay outfit. Uh, so for Make Mine Mayday, we have just finished Amazing Spider Girl, which is, sounds like a crazy feat within itself. But there is still much more to to come when it comes to the story of Mayday Parker. So uh, we will be discussing. I do actually have to talk to you because it definitely won't be March 9th, as we originally stated for uh, Mr. and Mrs. Spider-Man, because that is the uh, Scream 6 fan event. And I'm not missing that. I'm sorry. No, no. Uh, <laughs> you don't know how much of a horror fan Kelly McDaniel is. You have not been paying attention to her social media, and I will not get in your... Listen, I know that. Wait, wait. Me. Or or even just my discussion of, like, stuff with the amount of times I've brought up a horror genre in our True. discussion. Um, because, honestly, great. comics and horror go hand in hand. Uh, that's why Gargoyles works on this, ch you know, on this channel. Because yeah, they're both. True. Um, but yes, so the thing is, is that, um, we will be discussing Mr. and Mrs. Spider-Man along with a couple of other kind of off pocket, uh, but yet in universe things that just, we don't know where they fit in the timeline before we start on Spectacular Spider-Girl and really see April Parker, AKA Mayhem come in on her own, um, I've talked about this suit prior. I will talk about it later uh, since we're trying to end the, the stream. <laughs> um, yeah. And the yeah, differences that are there. Uh, but there are differences because April does come before May, as she has stated. <laughs> and, uh, oh, wow. Great. Um, so, yeah. So, um, yeah, we're... We are in the uh, last bit, just before the, as Zach has stated, the dark era of the Spider-Verse. <laughs> no, no, no I, I mean, I agree. Don't get me wrong. It's just, I I have uh, not so family-friendly words for, for that. <laughs> so, yeah, no, we are, we are on our way into a new season of Make Mine Mayday, even though we don't have much of a break. But you know us, we'll break when we have to. So. That's true. Um, I, I was talking about it a little bit before the show. I mean, you know, barring anything more continuing to be had, we, we got like probably at least till the end of the year, if not longer, uh, kind of mapped out with some breaks that are established in between. So we're really looking forward to it. Um, I, I I can't believe we're done with amazing. So for me, it's this is a yeah, really we have, we have gone through so much Spider Girl in such a short time. I honestly like I'm kind of it's kind of wild because of the amount of people that come up to us and like, they clearly haven't finished our episodes. Speaking of, uh, I did fix all the, uh, playlists. So As you should have. Okay. Good. <laughs> I've been trying to get this guy to do that for a long time. Thank you, Adam. Adam's been on my ass. Um, so I have fixed the playlists for both, um, Spidey to experience and for make my mayday. If you're an audio listener, you're obviously listening to this, but I will have gotten a bunch of the audio episodes out. Uh, that's my next bit while we're uh, oh between now and, and the next episode to make my Mayday. I'm going to try to get those backlogs done and then uh, trying to get the next between now and the next episode of Spidey to Experience. I'll be trying to get the backlogs out and done. So uh, before I get out of here, <laughs> as, as Bigman said, Soundboard, Kelly's triggered. Uh, <laughs> I'm triggered by just randomly showing Spider Girl things now as I throw them back in their pocket. Yeah. In, the yeah. in this closet. So, yeah. So, without further ado, now that everybody has gotten a chance to plug their stuff, um, we're going to start wrapping up this episode of Spider Dude Experience. Before we get out of here, we got to mention our patrons at patreon.com slash. Spidey Network, Vinkman, Scott, Greg, Kegar, Master Dramon, Venetian, Kale, Georgia, Jessica, Vicky, Catherine, Cindy, A. Farquhar, 
Laura Ed Reynolds, as well as Scott, Vanessa, and Janelle. Thank you guys for your support of all of our shows over on the Spidey Dude Radio Network. Shows like the aforementioned Make Mine Mayday, the sister show on the channel to this particular show. We also got Clone Saga Chronicles, the show all about Spider Girl or Spider Girl. <laughs> the, the, the Clone Saga related characters. It's fine. It's about Spider Girl now. It's all <laughs> about April. <laughs> it's all about April. Yeah, there's a lot of clones in there, too. So uh, we got Spectacular Radio, the show all about the Spectacular Spider-Man cartoon that ran from uh, 2008 to 2009 that ran on Kids WB and Disney XD. We got Amazing Spider-Man Classics with Hobby and Jack Trujillo talking about Spider-Man from the beginning. We got the Salby Sima era podcast uh, that talks about the Salby Sima time on the Spectacular Spider-Man comic, starting with the death of Jude DeWolf all the way up until the Clone Saga. And then we got Voices from the Eerie, a Gargoyles podcast, which covers the Gargoyles cartoon from the beginning with co-creator Greg Wiseman on e almost every episode. And then we got our Patreon first show, Books of X, going to be Patreon first show and then released here on YouTube. So check it out, all of it on Spidey-Dude.com and this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time here on the Spidey Dude Radio Network.